Uh, good evening. I'd like to call a Monday, uh, April 15th, 2024, Rowan Select Board meeting to order. Uh, tonight with, with us tonight, to my left is Flo Smith and Joe Staub. To my right is Tour Nelson, Acting Town Administrator, and Kyle and the Weasel. I'm Brad Town, and uh, additions or changes to the agenda? None. Uh, public comment. I'd like to make a comment as the public. So I'm going to say uh, nearly a week ago, I think it was April 8th, or right after the, um, the eclipse, there was an unsanctioned coin drop done on Route 12. It started, it probably ended about as quick as it ended. The individual who, who put it on was donating money to the fire department. Although it was, the intent was good, um, probably not the, the best um, decision making in doing so. I will say the individual donated $388 of funds to the fire department. Being that it was unsanctioned and not solicited, the fire department is not feeling like they should accept that at this time. I'm turning it over to the town. Do with it as you wish. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How does that normally okay. work for my benefit? I don't understand. I don't know how that normally works. Well, how you do it, coin drop? Yeah. You go through the state for a permit, also through the town for a permit. There are certain things that they need, certain criteria for the road, um, signage, speed, all that, sight distance. Um, advance notice. Advance notice. And being aware. Right. And in this case, there wasn't the awareness. Right. Well, I would say since it was raised for the fire department, we give it back Just to the fire department. Just going to say that. <laughs> I think this would have been something that better off to ask for permission for than ask for forgiveness for than permission. I wish I had not heard of this because we cannot take action on it tonight since it wasn't warned. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I would ask that the fire department take custody of it and we will formally allow you to keep it at the next meeting. Yep. And I highly respect also that you brought it forward to us, but um, given everything Tour just said, you know, it's not something we can act on tonight. And obviously, you know, it sounds like it was done in good faith. It's just we didn't have the awareness. Correct. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other public comment? <laughs> <laughs> That was a doozy. <laughs> I wanted to see if, excuse me, I wanted to see if at some future point we could come up with a coherent policy as far as who gets to use our town property. We have private companies out here using it. There's one out there now that's been there for nine, ten months. <clears throat> when we have an industrial park right up the street, these people can rent from the industrial park, make friends up there, and not in our little historic hamlet. But some future point, maybe I can talk to Tor and find out how we go about doing that. Maybe come up with a written policy. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Tim. Any other comments? Hearing none, um, Route 12 Bridge 67 and Lover's Lane Bridge updates. Got Adam here with V-Trans. Uh, well known to all of us here on the board and welcome you back. Turn everything over to you. Thank you for being here, Adam. You're welcome. Um, so as the board mentioned, uh, I'm Adam Gujaro, the uh, project manager for uh, the Berlin Route 12 uh, Bridge 67 truss replacement. I'm here at the request of the board to provide an update on that project as well as uh, the Lotus Lane Bridge. Um, so the goal Tonight is really just to provide an update on where we're at in the design process and then provide an opportunity to ask questions. I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. Um, so for the Berlin Route 12 bridge, this is 67 over the Dog River. Um, we're currently uh, approaching the end of the preliminary 
plans phase. Um, so what that means is we've, the last time we were here, we were in this project definition phase. Um, so then after that, we had defined the alternative that was selected. So we moved forward into design. So right now we're developing plans and specifications as well as an estimate for that. We're currently doing the geotechnical investigation um, along with utility relocations and then quantifying areas of impact from both an environmental and resource standpoint um, so that we can then obtain permits and the uh, necessary right away to complete the project. Um, so as I mentioned, in the preliminary plans phase, we anticipate uh, finishing this out in August of this year. Um, this includes finalizing the alignments for both the alignments, profiles, and drainage for both the new bridge replacement as well as the temporary on-site detour that we have. That really helps define our limits and the impacts to adjacent property owners. Um, we are in the process of obtaining the geotechnical data, so that's the borings um, that the state will go out there and obtain so that we know what we're dealing with as far as subsurface conditions go. Uh, and then Despite being such a rural location, this one actually has a fairly complicated utility relocation. If there's not a lot of room uh, to relocate utilities on the current side of the bridge that they're on. So we had a lot of back and forth with uh, GMP and the telecom to try and come up with a relocation there. Um, we think we have a solution, so that will be reflected in the preliminary plans. So once we finish preliminary, the next steps will be uh, to contact the property owners who are impacted by this work and then begin that right away acquisition process. Uh, that typically takes about two years to complete, um, maybe a little less if um, people are willing to sign on. If not, it can take longer. Um, we also, with the preliminary plans, start applying for environmental permits for the project. Um, and then we move into final design as well, concurrently with those other tasks. And right now, the project is currently on track for a fall winter start um, in 2026, and then that'll go through 2027 to probably the November time frame. Are there any questions before I move on to the lovers' lane? Okay. Um, so the Can I just ask, if, if sure. things go quicker than anticipated, would that change the construction start or would that, would that remain the same? Not likely. Um, the contractor may get started earlier on this. What we'd anticipate is that they would put that temporary bridge in the fall before and then do the construction the next spring, summer, and then remove it the following fall. The one thing that I wanted to interject is on the internet, it indicates the anticipated replacement is the summer of 2026. Okay. So that probably should be updated Update so that, that anyone sure. researching it. Yep. Thank you. Not transparent. And that? Uh, I didn't know where it was. I just found it earlier. Okay. Yeah, I'll check e-transparency for the fact sheet. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Christian Mai for Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. Uh, will there be an opportunity, and maybe as part of this presentation, to see those preliminary uh, engineering plans? Uh, so the plans are not complete okay. right now. The will there be an opportunity in the future? Uh, they'll be posted to the V Transparency site once those are complete. Yep. Right now, it's just the conceptual plans that are on that site. Is there, um, I think last time, you brought these plans to the town. There was uh, talk of removing the sidewalk on the bridge. Has that been added back in to support the pedestrian? <laughs> or? No, we're currently at the, um, I believe it's 11 foot lanes and five foot shoulders mm -hmm. on either side of the bridge. Um, and that is to eliminate the need for the sidewalk and winter maintenance of that sidewalk. Okay. Any other questions on that? I believe the reason we eliminated the sidewalk is because the, the town uh, decided they didn't want to do the maintenance. Okay. Yeah, but, we but it still allows room for pedestrian access. It's just not a side, raised sidewalk. It's just not a raised sidewalk, correct. There's still <clears throat> between the fog lane or the fog line and the bridge rail uh, five feet. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so the uh, next project, I'm not actually the project manager for, it's currently in scoping right now. Um, so that's with our scoping engineer, uh, Laura Stone, who manages all of those projects. Uh, but I can give an update on that. Um, that one, the project's been funded, so it's moved into the scoping period. So they're currently in this project definition phase. Uh, the project's not defined right now. Um, as I mentioned, the project manager is uh, Laura Stone. Um, and so as part of the scoping process, uh, they're doing resource identification. Um, so that's identifying wetlands, um, bat habitat, um, any archaeological or historic um, resources. They're also doing preliminary hydraulics, so to get a rough idea of what size structure needs to go there to meet bank full width and not have the roadway over top <laughs> during a storm event. Uh, they are also getting survey and existing right away onto a plan sheet so that they can start to lay out conceptual um, alternatives. And then the traffic data and the geotechnical assessment there. And that's really just a rough, the difference between the geotechnical assessment here and what we're doing with the other one is that this is more of a desktop review on sort of existing information that's out there. What site is this? Are you talking about now? Uh, this is Lover's Lane okay. Bridge. Uh, so once they're done with that, uh, so the next steps, they prepare the alternatives presentation um, with the footprints. Um, and part of that, they do resource uh, coordination with the various agencies throughout the state. Um, and then there'll be an alternatives presentation meeting, alternative acceptance. Um, and then it gets transferred to design in the summer of 2025. So this alternatives presentation meeting would likely happen sometime in the spring, I'll say, of 2025. Joe? So it, it appears that this bridge has no historical value, and it'll be a replacement. Is that true? That I don't know. Okay. It's in the very early stages of the scoping. I would imagine it would come about as being historical, that that would be found in the work that... Yeah, that'll be as, as part of the resource ID, and I don't know where that is at right now. What is your um, estimation in terms of completion, if you had to put a date? on it long for construction mm -hmm. I believe right now it's out in 2028 which could get pushed to 2029 um, depending on other mm -hmm. projects that's incredible but, yeah. <laughs> but you said the funding is completely there the that funding is there yeah this is? one is uh, IIJA funds okay okay thank you Excuse me, sir. I'm a little on the age here, but I can't hear what you're saying. Sure. And I'm pertaining to the bridge at Lover's Lane. That bridge has been closed, I believe, six years in October. Uh, we've had several times the ambulances couldn't get down that road. I live a quarter of a mile from the blacktop if that road is open. Last weekend, we had a house up on West Hill burned to the ground. The fire truck had to come in. The tanker truck, I believe, came from Williamstown, but Northfield came down that back road. If that bridge had been open, it saved a mile closer to get to that fire. And, and I've been on that road since the 40s. I'll be 90 in August. And I raised six children there. I've been on a bird board in this town. And I just don't understand how that bridge could be neglected. For six years, when we have elderly people and fire trucks and ambulances coming in and out, and they have to travel. We have an excellent selectman, I mean road commissioner, and he does a, a fine job on that road. But we all know what Sprinkle roads are and Paul roads are. And we all know what they are in the winter time. I, I, I don't understand how they can close off a main entrance to 10 or 15 houses right in that area, not to mention uh, it'd be a mile shorter to get to West Hill or any of those places. Uh, there's always a lot of pol politics Believe me, I've been involved with it. But I just don't understand how they can walk away and say, well, we'll fix it next year, we'll fix it the following year. 
It's been six years, I believe, in October. That's a poor excuse for representing the people that are paying taxes. And also, when you expect a fire truck or an ambulance to come to your house, they got to go a mile further either way on both ways of the road in the spring of the year or the fall of the year. And I've lived on that road since the 40s, except for going in, I was in the service during the Korean War. And outside of that, I've lived right there and I built a house right there and raised my family. And I've been on study group of schools here, uh, helped design and build U32 of Berlin Elementary, and I was honored to have my name on that plaque out in the hallway going to the gym. This town does not look at the outskirts. They look strongly at what's going on at Berlin Corners and the Barry Montpelier Road. But the outskirts like Darlin Road or West Hill, we're the last people on the totem pole that get any attention to something that needs being done. And I don't believe, whether it's the state or the town or anybody else, they should be neglect that totally neglect on the safety of the people that live on that highway. When fire trucks and ambulances have to go a mile further in on a road, dirt road, or a winter road or anything else, when they could be coming in a quarter of a mile to my house and 10 others around there about the same way. And there's two daycares right there also. Uh, I don't know where the answers come from, but we ain't seeing them. <laughs> Will that bridge be open this year? No. Unfortunately, no. Unfortunately not. Uh, I was told, and I, I was involved once years ago, well, they had a special town meeting and had a lawyer there, and property taxes would be held. Part of the property taxes would be held until that bridge would be open. And several people have brought that up to me because I'm the oldest member on that road. You know, I hate to see things like that done, but sometimes that's what it takes to open somebody's eyes. We had, last fall, we had three people that had had ambulances. They had to come up and down those roads. They could have been a quarter of a mile from the blacktop. Now, one year, I can understand where something isn't done. But for six years, there's no excuse, whether it's the state of Vermont involved or the town of Berlin. I appreciate your concerns. Um, the project is moving forward, and we're going to progress it. Um, at the speed we can. Thank you for coming and expressing your concern, though. Yes, yeah, thank you for being here and expressing your views. And what the gentleman said, in case you couldn't hear him, Adam, he explained that he appreciates that you're here and there's a timeline that they're following with here. The good thing is they have the funding for it. So that well, hallelujah. Is, yes, that is the number one positive, and they are working at it, and they have it scheduled. It's just fitting it in amidst all the other. We moved on that farm, known as Sherwood's Farm, in the early part of the 40s. My folks raised 16 children there. Between World War II and Vietnam, nine boys all wore uniforms. And after I came back in the service, I bought a section, our barn had burnt when I was in the service. I bought a section of that land. I built a home there and put my children in. I raised my family there. But seven people in my family lived on that road and raised their families there. You know, it, we pay the same taxation as every place else in town. But the representation is very poor, very poor. And up until now, I've asked about everybody I could look at, and nobody knew anything about what was going on. <laughs> and I'm sure if your house was a quarter, half a mile from the blacktop and you were dependent on an ambulance or a fire truck, you'd look at it pretty strong yourself. And that's what we're doing on that road right now. Thank you. Thank you, I appreciate you. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, Mr. Chair, 
Adam, with all respect due to the V-Trans, your timeline is ridiculous. <laughs> and I, I know it's not your fault, okay? But you're now adding four years on to a six-year problem for a little, for a little bridge. bitty bridge. Huh? A little and bridge. For, 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 I mean, granted, the only thing that it affects me, because I live off of Chandler, is it's a shorter route to the pavement during mud season. And God love them, our road crew, they work on it every day. But four years? That's a little ridiculous. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yep. Any other comments? Any questions for Adam? The only other question that I have, Adam, is there any alternative that could be done in the interim while waiting for the final fix to open it in the interim? Is there any possibility of that, that I don't or any know. thoughts? I don't know. I'd have okay. to check back with mm -hmm. the program manager. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I do. We heard that that bridge was closed down because inspectors were under it when a loaded dump truck went by, went over it. 16 wheelers. So why can't it be open to passenger cars? Is it that dangerous where it really needs to be closed? I mean, it's one thing to have a loaded dump truck that weighs whatever versus a car that's 5,000 pounds. The question Lori has is valid because there used to be a lot of huge trucks that were transporting to um, a pit and that's not happening now so it would be interesting to know if it could be opened up for car traffic the pit is closed down right it's closed the now. only thing it's used for today if the state of vermont or somebody is repairing a culvert or digging up stuff he uses it for a dump plate but they come in from the trailer road by the schoolhouse the mm -hmm. cemetery mm -hmm. they aren't allowed down in there mm -hmm. but they should have been in the first place because I was curious if it could be alternatively opened up with, um, you know, documentation as to who could travel it and not, you know, if the other travel came in as it's doing now, and then just the residents could come to and from with vehicles. So I don't want to get into the middle of this conversation because I'm not the expert. Um, <clears throat> but the town did reach out to the region oh, maybe 18 months ago with the same question, can we open it up to limited weight vehicles? Mm -hmm. um, on our request, VTrans went out and inspected the bridge again. I will share that email with you exactly what their response is, but basically they looked at it closely, had, saw some very concerning structural issues and said we wouldn't recommend that. Mm -hmm. So I will share that email with uh, maybe through tour, you can distribute it so you guys have Thank that. Thank you. On, That's on helpful. <coughs> I went out a couple of weeks ago and took pictures and looked very closely and structurally, you know, I had concerns as well. So mm -hmm. that initiated my concerns and question as to whether it's even possible based on what I saw recently. Thank you. Thank you both. Any other questions for Adam? If not, we'll move on. Thank you very much, Adam. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Thank you. Uh, move on to Recreation Committee update. No. Uh, Wait. CVRPC River Program. Christian and Keith. Oh. Thank you. I kind of introduced myself in that last bit of my previous life. I was the transportation planner for CDRBC and now the executive director. We're here to talk about the river program today. Um, Keith was good enough to write in what river stands for. It's an acronym. Um, but it's, 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 a, it's a flood response and resiliency program. Uh, the region is facilitating our local, uh, the local process. The goal is really to identify projects and do some preliminary engineering, um, but identify projects that municipalities are, are eager to get behind and potentially support local maps. That is, those big projects that are really lower water in the next big flood, um, but it might also come with um, a, a, some portion of local match. Right now it's 75-25, federal, federal, local. Um, 
but uh, obviously there might be other resources available as this progresses. It's years down the road, um, but we definitely wanted to connect with, in particular, the select board here in Berlin, um, given the damage and the impact of last summer's flooding on this community. Um, with that, I'm going to hand it over to Keith because he's got all the program details. Okay. Yeah, my name is Keith Kevin. I'm the emergency uh, man. I do emergency management and transportation at CPRPC. Uh, so, two pretty much go hand in hand. Since so most disasters, we lose a lot of transportation infrastructure. Uh, but yeah, the goal of this program is really what's uh, doing is prioritizing projects, trying to get community support behind uh, projects within our communities, and it's providing the advanced assistance. So. Uh, uh, Two Rivers, Ottaquichi uh, Regional Commission has set this up, and then in each area, in our area, we have two main areas of focus, uh, Barry City and Montpelier, but since you're between the two, you kind of <laughs> fit in the sweet spot of like any project that's done in your town realistically to reduce flooding is probably going to benefit both, both of those uh, towns as well. So that's why we definitely wanted to reach out to you all, and especially with uh, all the flood damage that happened on the uh, uh, down along 302, you know, primarily. Uh, but uh, the strategy that's going forward with this is mainly to uh, try to do community engagement, get any ideas that are out there by anyone. Uh, there will be a website set up, and uh, even, you know, anybody can, will be able to put in, uh, there's going to be a survey as well It's going to be online. Anybody can put in any ideas. Those are going to go to uh, an engineering firm. Uh, I think, as I say, can we announce? SLR. Yeah, yeah. As say, okay, that's what I was going to say. SLR is yeah. going to be the firm we're working with who has a lot of experience in our watershed already anyways. Uh, and we'll then have them review the entire list of projects. Uh, they're going to do some uh, initial scoping on some of those. They'll, you know, are also going to be looking at areas so may even come back and say, hey, uh, SLR just doing a big overview, looked at certain areas in your town and thought they found some places where we could really mitigate some flooding. Uh, as Christian said, currently it's a 75-25, which realistically for any FEMA project, that's at least three years down the road for any hazard mitigation projects. Uh, you know, that's the current situation. Hopefully either the state or, you know, they can find federal funds uh, through our congressional delegation to help lower that burden because uh, we know, you know, we're fully aware every town was damaged, you know, and has uh, financial, you know, constraints due to that, you know, just trying to rebuild. Uh, but yeah, it's mainly to go for hazard mitigation grant program uh, applications, <laughs> which generally require some advanced uh, engineering. So, I mean, the, the five main types of projects we're most likely looking at are buyouts and removals of buildings, uh, elevations, Possible relocations, so moving entire structures, you know, out of uh, either the floodplain or the floodway. Uh, flood proofing of non-residential buildings, so that can be either dry or wet, either dry or wet flood proofing. So commercial buildings that are already there, uh, helping them to, you know, dry flood proofing is exactly what it says it's putting in like a flood gate at the doors, making it so you know you, you pick a height. You set the building up and engineer it so that water will not go, get in unless it gets deeper than that. You know, so you would pick, say, four feet. You're good up until then. Uh, wet flood proofing is the exact opposite of where you're actually allowing the water to get into the building, but you use materials. You know that basically you can come in and squeegee the building out, pressure wash, and get back to business. You know, so I mean, uh, for the commercial buildings, that's often can be a very good option. Uh, in some communities, you know, just like with the, uh, I saw you all have the EWP program on, I know currently it's at 100% match, but in that original discussion, the uh, owners were going to have to kick in some of that money. A, a process could be set up for commercial buildings uh, that the commercial owner is covering that piece of match as well. Uh, <coughs> but also then there's the big, uh, the uh, number five on the types of projects, improve, improving flood channels. That's where you're actually doing removing berms, uh, creating floodplain, you know, doing things to actually increase the amount of water that can get down the river without flooding into buildings and structures. And hopefully that lowers your overall flood depth. 
just gave a couple quick examples. Uh, and we're wanting also anybody that might be working in your community that is working with uh, uh, mitigation or uh, uh, recovery, we want to make sure we're aware of who those people are and we want to uh, have a conversation with them just to make sure their ideas are being heard, what they're doing. You know, so we, we don't want anybody to feel left out at the end that, hey, I had a great idea and nobody came to talk to me. If somebody's out there, I definitely want to know. You know, we, we want to try to let everybody have their say. Uh, yeah, as I say, I know uh, from base uh, looking over things for the town, uh, and I had actually even talked to Tom today, uh, just trying to make sure there wasn't any studies that we weren't aware of that had happened in Berlin. I don't believe that there are uh, any previous studies that have actually been done looking at flood mitigation in, in the town. But uh, if anybody is aware of anything that you know, you've come across uh, while working here tour or you know, as being on the select board, if you know of something that was done in the past, please share that information with us. Uh, and that's that's about it. Pretty quick. Yeah. Next, next steps. Yes. Oh yeah. Next steps. Uh, yeah, we will be setting up uh, uh, public meetings late, uh, down the road with the uh, engineering firms. Uh, but yeah, the next steps are just going to be starting to collect those ideas uh, and just trying to uh, coordinate. And we will just want. Uh, Ideally, one person from the select board here to be just uh, kind of our point person of contacting if we have anything to uh, discuss with you all. So I don't know if you want to appoint somebody or you know, that's up to you. <laughs> Thank you. Any questions? So I think you said that the the experts will be looking to see what can be done right because obviously yeah they're they're going to do like a base overview okay. but uh if you have any projects in the town that you're aware of or yeah you know, no i get that i just want to make sure that somebody yeah, is well, actually the, taking a holistic view and yeah and, well, and proposing it. ideas it's kind of an upside down triang triangle we want to get everything into the top of the triangle then we'll let the engineers kind of filter out what's going to be the most effective projects. But yeah. if we don't get them in at the beginning, they won't be there at the end. So right. that's kind of where we are. Okay. So are you looking at opportunities, not just on the Stevens Branch, but what about the Dog River? It, if it would be something that would actually help, you know, actual, uh, I guess realistically, if it's an overall project that's good for the dog and actually lowered the flood levels in the dog, that should help on Pelier, okay. you know, because I mean, especially when you once you go under the bridge there, where they uh, uh, at the confluence, you know, that jammed up completely. Obviously, with the flood volumes we had last summer, so anything that can lower that flood volume going into Middlesex is going to benefit mm -hmm. uh, Mon Pelier. So I I believe it would, you know, I'll fight for it. Yeah, just to <laughs> just to make this as confusing as possible. <laughs> All, we're working towards the hazard mitigation grant program. That's where the big money is to, put, to construct the projects. The river program is going to provide that preliminary engineering to help get those, those projects pre-designed. And the state has really want, said we're going to focus on the Stevens and, and branch parts of the Winooski for the river program. But the whole state is eligible for the hazard mitigation grant program. So if there's any early engineering that's already been done over on the Dog River, say following Irene, Now's the time to dust that off, and it might be a viable project again. And you know, we'll go straight to the end. You know, don't don't go through the river program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's it. I mean, there's 90 million currently in the hazard mitigation grant program for the state. Uh, you know, and ideally, we would love to see that entirely be spent. You know, you know, obviously not all just in our region, but I mean, right. that would be great to mitigate that much. You know. Uh, for future floods. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this is providing that advanced assistance, which has mitigation grants generally require some engineering to be done just to get a uh, application through, especially for anything larger, uh, you know, bridges, that sort of thing. Uh, so this is basically paying that first piece that usually would require a, just a grant just to get you to the hazard mitigation grant. Uh, usually you have to go through what's called a brick grant to get there. And uh, so it's kind of jumping it forward by realistically, you know, talking time frames like with the bridge. 
a brick grant usually takes three years. This would then realistically jump you two years for, further forward in that project timeline. Uh, and obviously you don't have to pay the match for it. So you're, you're getting that piece done. What is the timeline for the river, river program? Uh, the current timeline is uh, we want to have the, any projects in by and the engineering done by October. Uh, there may be another extension, but ori the original was actually we would have it this summer. We got a six month month extension, uh, and they expect probably a full another one. But we want to move forward as quickly as possible because who knows when the next one will be. And you said there's 90 million in the hazard mitigation yes. program currently. Yeah, currently, and that probably will actually still go up because that's based off of the actual uh, uh, total uh, PA damages for the last summer's flooding and they're still computing <laughs> you know it's still not done I mean I'm sure you're as you all are aware mm -hmm. you know we're still patching pieces from that and mm -hmm. as that keeps going up in number that overall uh, HMGP number goes up as well Great. just a question um, down where I live the river has started to encroach into the town right away, washing away the uh, what little bit of uh, land is between the guardrails and the river bank. Yes. Is there anything in this program for the for armoring the bank or? No, there's not not in this current program now. Okay. You know, just uh, um, it, uh, it's been it's it's been an ongoing thing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, there are other funding sources that we might be able to help assist, you know, with that. Uh, and now, is it encroaching toward uh, uh, the uh, town road or is it oh, the yeah. state road? Yeah, town road. Yeah, it's a uh, junction road. Okay. Any questions for these folks? Thank you. Thank you yep. for explaining. Appreciate yep. it. Thank you. Don't hesitate to reach out to myself or Keith if you have any questions regarding disaster and recovery more broadly as well. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Thank you, Keith. Um, Fire Department merger. Uh, Janet and Pete. Then you see. <laughs> Good there, Pete. We got your back at this table, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, good, how are you? Good. <laughs> you do have a one page document in your packet. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, currently, there is a list of questions. I think I received one more after I sent you guys this list, but um, basically, at, at the last Fire Department Corporation business meeting, um, we asked for feedback from the corporation, what, what they had for questions. Um, so this is the list of questions. And yeah. <laughs> so I think some of these questions were designed to ask the select board to help give the steering committee some guidance in which directions we're supposed to be headed in. Uh, we started in October. We've been talking about this quite a bit in this. Brad, this has been talked about as long as you've been on the select board. This isn't a new topic. And what's happening now or what seems to be happening is that Berlin is simply outpacing, Berlin's growth is outpacing the rate of an all-volunteer fire department. And we don't want to wait until after. We want to sort of be proactive and, and go at this ahead of time. So in these meetings, we've had an abundance of questions, I think. Um, some of them sort of asked over and over again. And I think, you know, actions speak louder than words, and sometimes inactions speak louder than words also. So we've had all these questions about what might happen, and these recent ones 
or the most recent ones that talk about who's going to run what and what's going to happen to the fire department and what's going to happen. How much control is the town going to take? I haven't heard anyone embrace this idea with suggestions on how the fire department could better serve in this town under these new circumstances, which are, have been suggested, two full-time employees and possibly bringing some of the administrative duties in-house to relieve them of those duties, because they're volunteer. They gotta right. come in to do everything. So if you have two full-timers and they're focused on the fire department being the first and the fastest responders, you're already there. There's a lot of, um, a lot of benefits to the town and to the fire department for this, um, I say at the very least, two full-time employees at the fire station would create a more effective and efficient fire department. The employees might be eligible for the SAFER and the AGF grants, which would help pay those salaries. It would definitely increase response times. It would create a direct line of communications with the select board and the taxpayers, that keeping them better informed of the fire department initiatives. Um, it would remove a lot of administrative duties that I know you love to do and come in just to take care of that. I mean, we're all set up to do that. And um, we've had three fire chiefs that have gone through a variation of this transition. And each of them said it is imperative the town of Berlin will go through this sooner or later. And all three of them have felt that the change or the transition was better for the town. But to be perfectly clear, and I'm not sure if this message is getting through, we're not suggesting that the volunteer fire department go away. The town of Berlin is heavily, heavily dependent upon them. All as we're suggesting, or I think the town, my interpretation of what we're supposed to be figuring out at that steering uh, committee meeting, is how can putting two full-timers in that station all the time and alleviating some of the, the duties of the volunteers make a better fire station. And we might need a little guidance on that from the select board because it seems to waver a wee bit. It, sometimes I think we're talking about a bigger ordeal than we really are. And in the minutes of the uh, chief from Williston, he said they had a um, town not a, a town administrator, select board, it was very much like us, and all they did was include a fire chief. And that fire chief pretty much ran the show over there, but was in direct contact with the select board, and he said as long as the department was training and responding to fires as they should, he had carte blanche. I mean, we've had several meetings, the Berlin Economic Development Committee has had two meetings in the past six weeks with the chief of police. <coughs> We're not telling him how to run the police department. He gets, he gets paid to do that. We have a highway crew. We don't ride in the trucks with them and tell them how to plow, and they do that. I don't think the town should take over control of the fire department. We have a fire department. Why would we think I'm going to tell them what to do? You know? We got people there with 30 years' experience. We got a chief right here on the board. We have another steering committee also here on the board. It seems to me this is the time when we could have a good conversation with that fire department if everyone's willing to come on out and find out where we stand. Well, Pete, I mean, I never thought from, you know, from my perceptions of this, I never thought that uh, there was going to be any great changes to the fire department. I don't either. And this is what I'm saying. I think once in a while on this committee we get a little bit sidetracked and we have questions that I'm, I mean, I could go through these questions with you and give you my opinion, but you gotta be perfectly clear, this is only my opinion. It's yeah. not, it is not of the steering committees, but uh, what will the qualifications for responders be? You know, what are they now? Who makes those decisions and why would we change that? Yeah. What will the requirements for the responders be? What are they now? We're not gonna change that. Will they be paid for going on calls? I don't, what is it now? Why, why would we change that? I could go through all of these and it's almost that same answer. We're not looking to change the structure of the bylaws or the rules of the corporation. I think the town is not, I think the town is stepping up. It is not stepping in to help bring this fire department up to what it's gonna need to be very shortly. 
I think you said it very well about stepping up versus stepping in. Yeah, nobody's trying. Do you think I want that, Joe? Right? You want that job? You're the chief. <laughs> there is nobody here that wants to step in and change what's going on. They just want to be able to help bring it up to par. Um, yeah. You sort of answered my question, I think, but I, I, being new to this, I assume we've looked at how other, I mean, we can't be reinvent, reinventing the wheel here. There has to be done had, other. We've had three come yes. to our meetings. Okay. Three chiefs, Williston. Okay. And, um, and they said that open communication yeah. with the select board was helpful. And, you know, if you think about it, it's funny, I've lived here 40 something years. We have an airport here, we have three nursing homes here, we have Central Vermont Hospital here, we have the psychiatric ward here. If you've tried to drive through the mall lately, we got more housing being built than you can count. We got the Gary Group putting up five more floors of a uh, hotel over here. And if you are in some other meetings where you can talk to Tom Badowski, the zoning yeah. administrator, tour you're familiar with all that's going on in this town. I'm not belittling the fire department one bit. They are a fantastic group. They've served well. I think just as, as a town, we want to step in and help them continue to be able to offer those services. So what might be helpful, and, and I apologize for not getting it out last week, is maybe a copy of the, the fire department's bylaws. And in that might answer some of these questions. And you could see what those, maybe those requirements are, or what, whatever it is set. And so the questions would be, you would look at what you currently have, and you should be asking yourself, is that adequate? So A lot of them are answered in the bylaws. But a, lot, it, a lot of these questions. Yeah. <laughs> but at, at some point, you also got to think about, OK, we could stay the status quo, or do we change it? Is that adequate for the town of Berlin? But wouldn't we're that be an ongoing conversation as growth happens, probably? And, and I think that's true. Yeah. A lot of this, I think, is going to, if any change is happening, it'll be through the process. Right. You know, after, if anything happens. Well, th all three of those guys are the previous chiefs said you will not know half the questions until you've made the transition and mm -hmm. once they explain that to us it's correct and like what Joe's saying I mean it's easy for me to sit here and say we don't want to make any changes to the corporation or to the bylaws I don't even know what they are that's your job so how do we come I mean you guys are the fire department they are the police department someone else is the highway department we don't go in there and fix hydraulics and tell them how to do their jobs I imagine as we move forward, so I have another little thing. Why should we bother to fuss about this before we have decided whether we can or cannot do it? There's no sense in having this debate or these questions only to find out we can't or are not going to do it. Let's not waste everybody's time. Let's determine that we can and are willing to move forward with this with an open discussion to find out what we need to do to provide future, well, current, but in the future, I mean, I think Tour may remember the fire department's budget, justifiably so, it's like almost doubled in three years. I mean, if we're, because it has to. So that's a sign in itself that more is going on. Uh, if you've driven around the town, even across the country, everybody's trying to hire. Employers are not as able to let employees just leave whenever they can for a, an emergency. And as we have here in town with everything else, possibly a paid staff is going to help that, as opposed to just a volunteer. I mean, if you're paid to be there, that's your job. If you're a volunteer to show up in the middle of the day, what do you do? I mean, I don't know. I'm not a volunteer. <laughs> a lot of people have to answer that question. Do right. I pay my bills right, or do right. I go on a call? It's hard. I mean, so why put the volunteer fire department in that position without some help from the town? I mean, it's all from the town, <laughs> anyways. But, you know, without improving the um, quality of their response times and those things. So, like I said, what might be helpful is a copy of the bylaws. Maybe we, we have a, a meeting at a larger venue. 
Um, we've been to the Grange before for larger meetings. To have um, corporation and select board, community involvement, whatever that is, to have discussions. It is, is that maybe the next step? Just so maybe to get an understanding? I don't know. Well, I guess I guess I'm, what I'm hearing Pete say is that there's sort of a if do we want to do this and if we do then we sort of worry you know we we find a right. path forward and I, so I'm I guess I'm trying to understand what the obstacles have been in the past right. is it a lack of just I I don't know what have the obstacles been to not moving forward in the past. Right. Well, is it communication? Is it the select no, board? Is it the corporation? Is it so? I, I attended a fire department meeting the other night, your, mm -hmm. one of your last meetings, and I was trying to feel and finally get a direction as to how the fire department itself feels about yeah. this. And I didn't come away with a clear point of view. I think there's some divide amongst the department itself as to what they should do and which directions for their own reasons. Yeah, and as I'm saying, I just was not able to come away with a clear grip as to whether they were fully on board or not. So it may not be one, and either the select board or the fire department, there may be some lack of commitment on both sides. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think the, the select board in the town, we had a non-binding vote that said they were interested in exploring, you know, a municipal fire department. Um, non-binding key word, but there's interest there. I think there's awareness from the select board as to what may have to happen in the very near future. And then it's just figuring out who and what the fire department wants to do and how they want to get there combined together with, you know, stepping up, not in, combined with the <clears throat> town. And can I just ask, when the, when the other towns came to your meeting, did they talk about the actual process or did they just talk about how it was working, like how they merged or how they, Williston I don't know what the word was a is. hostile takeover. Oh. <laughs> they, let it get, they let it get to the point where it was a hostile takeover. Oh. I think Middlesex is that trip, Johnson. That was he, um, he had a great Wakefields. Wakefield, Wait, okay. Wakefield he had a good and rapport. Middlesex. Yeah, and were the two other departments. Chief Assistant Chief right. Coons came. Yeah. And as I said, it, yeah. it takes a little while to work on I me. Mean, you know, nobody really embraces change fully. And um, this is probably a big change for Berlin. Change can be good. Yeah, I like change. <laughs> but anyway, I mean, I it seems me. I mean, like I said, I'm new. I haven't seen all the details, but it makes sense to me. And it, and I think, um, you know, I I, I I certainly would support it. You know, based on what I know. But some people in this room, including this guy, have no clue what you're talking about. Now I understand full-time employee. That's great and all that. But this whole court. Are you able to tell me in a few sentences, sure. briefly, what the heck you guys are talking okay, about? Okay, so right now, the fire department in Berlin yeah. is a privately owned corporation. It is staffed by volunteers, and it is funded by the town. So it, it's a, a private corporation, and we pay them every year and have for decades to provide fire protection to the town. What's happening now is there's a conversation about transitioning that corporate into a, a multifaceted where it would be a town municipal and the, um, and the corporate fire department, fire, volunteer fire department together. And the town would provide two full-time employees over there. There's nobody in the firehouse full-time. It's a complete volunteer. And also we could help alleviate some of their expenses and their burdens by bringing the administrative in-house and having the town do it just like the town does it for the fire department, excuse me, the police department and, you know, this administration building. So that's, that's the question. The, uh, well, also on that, um, over the course of the last couple of years, we've hired additional staff here in the in the uh, office, uh, especially in the town club, not the town, the treasurer's, treasurer's department. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's kind of leading into it. Right. Cool. Um, so what's the next step the committee needs from us? Well, as I say, it's to sort of clarify 
exactly what we're trying to accomplish here. As Brad said, I don't think it's very much. It's not a huge change. And um, simply put, I see putting two full-timers on staff and bringing administrative assistance in-house. Yeah. If, if you could clarify to the steering committee, that's all you're looking for. And if we incorporated Joe's idea, if we do have to do the uh, bylaws and the corporate laws and see what those changes are, I, I, I just don't know enough about it. My initial reaction is it shouldn't change them very much, but I don't know what, I haven't read them, so I don't know. Mm -hmm. You're still <laughs> that same corporation as you always were. I mean, where would we be? Could you imagine with only two firefighters? Where would we be? Lost completely. I mean, I even think part of the benefit of this, it gives you more time to train because you're not doing um, administrative work. It could give you more time to recruit, bring people into a different fire, de you know, fire department. Now I'm confused. So you're not talking about merging? We, we are well, right. transitioning. So, because I thought one of the issues was like the, you know the fire department as a as a private entity doesn't have some community. Uh, the idea being that if it was under the town under the umbrella of the town, there's more protection from that perspective. I I, I so it would it, the corporation would still exist. How does it, that work? Well, there's a lot of fire departments that have both. <laughs> that's they, they that's have, one of the questions. They have or they actually have town controlled volunteer fire departments. There's a lot of ways to to go about it. My point is that the town of Berlin just not, can't go it alone. It needs that volunteer fire department. So if we put it under an umbrella as a town, it sort of brings it in. You know, as a, a, a municipal fire department, it is now, could be called the town fire department, but it is, I don't want to use the word subsidized, but the fuel for that department's going to come from where it's always come from. And that's the the, the uh, volunteer side, right? But would the cor it seems to me as though, and I don't want to get into too many details here, but it seems to me as though the corporation would cease to exist and it would become a town fire department. Is that not? So there's there's been like Williston and and some of the others in a lot of those cases, you know, the corporation would still remain and and be a support for for the department you know um maybe you know not necessarily doing all the administrative work if the administrative work could be done you know by the town employees or or the you know the full timers yeah. whatever um but it, it would be more support for you know events and fundraising potentially and and that sort of thing um, so anybody at the league of cities and towns explain this to me <laughs> well actually they, they so sort of, we've spoken with them about insurance we've spoken right. with other insurance companies right so you're you're transitioning eventually yes it will become solely a municipal okay. fire department if we had a 20 million dollar budget for the fire department Let's do it tomorrow, but we don't, you know, and you can't, we just can't jump into our own fire department overnight. No, well, I, yeah, I, I see that. I guess I'm and, just and, not. And nor do we want to, because this is where all the experience lies. Why, why do we want to interfere with what's working? No, what I was envisioning was it was it'd be under the town. It's just everybody would be doing the same thing they're already doing, that, sort of. That's correct. But, but from a, the lawyer in me is wondering how that happens. So I guess, yeah, <laughs> anyway. And that brings up a really valid point because I see the steering committee as we went into it looking at the pros and cons as well as like the meeting the other night, getting the feedback and concerns and out of that came these questions. Right. But the steering committee is still happening to develop what in my vision would be a recommendation as to how to go forward and what you said i kind of look at it the same way that eventually at some point we need to run it through legal yeah and but, legal leagues of cities and towns etc 
and but, really look at it as a whole. But we're not reinventing the wheel. This right, has exactly. been done and that's, everywhere. I'm sure it's not. Find the right people, ask the right questions. to talk question. to, exactly. And we don't know that. The steering committee doesn't have any of that knowledge or expertise. Yes, sir. So, um, I, Matthew Romia, I'm from president of the town. I'm also on the steering committee, and I'm also on the fire department. I would just offer that we have spent a lot of time and we have churned up a whole lot of muddy water over something that really boils down to being not that complicated. The only component out of this entire conversation that has not taken a vote is the Berlin Fire Department Corporation. Well, I guess the select board hasn't, but we had that non-binding town vote. So yeah. to me, that's sort of not a big deal. But we can talk for days, weeks, and months, and years about this. Mm -hmm. But until the corporation takes an up or down vote, it's all, it's all just going to continue to be maybes and what ifs. From my perspective, and I speak only on behalf of myself right now, okay, the fire department is behind the curve. We have three nursing homes, a hospital, an airport, a hotel about to be two, plus the hilltop. Um, and we are a 10 minute out the door fire department. That's not an indictment, that's not a rock, it's not a, a stink bomb, it's just what it is. And in the current environment with the rate of fire spread and growth, and we can talk about all those things, we don't have those 10 minutes anymore. This idea of putting two full-time people in the station, I, I don't think we should even discuss that right now because it's irrelevant to talk about it. That is a budgetary question once it becomes a town department. We could hire two people right now as the fire department and put them in the fire station if we got that budget from the town and we went through all that. The challenge, at least from my perspective, that we continue to deal with, um, it, it is a little terrifying to me every time the tone goes off. What are we gonna get? I stepped out of this meeting a minute ago to see if we were going to get enough people to run a wreck. And it is a difficult environment, especially during the daytime, yeah. to recruit and retain volunteers. Okay, It's even more so when you understand that our fire chief has to run for re-election next month. That is the uncomfortable reality of a corporate entity fire department. We're not unusual, by the way. There's a ton of them around here. But in the modern era, in a professional department, we need to move past the idea of a popularity contest every two years to decide who's going to run the department. We need to be a functional, um, well-equipped, trained, responding department. It won't mean the end of the corporation because you look next door, Northfield Ambulance, they have the Northfield Ambulance Volunteers Inc. They fundraise, they do good things for the members and, and it's fine and everything's still good. The reality of the merger, because I know we have people talking about months, years and decades, it is about 90 days if we, if, if we, if the corporation voted on it and the select board voted on it, you've got to transfer title to property. You've got to figure out the lease on the fire station from the school. Okay? And you've got to figure out how much of the cash in the bank goes to the town and how much stays with the corporation. And then you've got to hire, do whatever the HR part of bringing the firefighters over is. I'm not sure what else you'd have to do. We become a town. We probably have to let VLCT know so they can write insurance on the fire trucks. 
but but that's the nutshell. We keep digging down into these issues interminably, but, but that's it. That helps. Thank you. Just type in. Thank you. <laughs> Anything else on this? So I think I would like to say just you know you have a copy of the questions you know um, I think a part of the concern of the corporation members are is you know how much town or select board or administrator control is there going to be over the department or the corporation you know they, they want to understand um, you know, what, what kind of support the, the department is going to get from the town. I mean, I think the fire, de I mean, the police department is, is that a similar, would it look similar to that? Is that the answer? I don't know. Well, I think most of our departments are, I mean, other than some of the structure as far as the governance or, or the, the, uh, uh, taking care of the personnel. I mean, it's. Uh, I mean, when these talks started, I had no, I had no concept of other than just, you know, helping with the, or taking over some of the administrative, and you know, if we had, if we had to, you know, have a appointment of a fire. Yeah. And other than that, I don't. I didn't see any. I mean, it seems as though the fire chief would report to the select, you know, would be, would report to the select board and would be sort of accountable to the select board, but that the fire chief would run the fire department, right? I mean, does that? And, well, right here, we have 10 full-timers in the yeah. police board, two part-timers. Do you know what's going on over there? No. No, that's the, that's the chief's job. That's right. why we hire them and pay them. And, you know, it, as, uh, as part of the steering committee, I, I like Pete's analogy of what you know how we worded it uh, I think that that's the best analogy of how this really should happen um, I, if it's going to happen and um, I, I like the idea of having the fire chief re, uh, respond or report right to the the select board that, that's that's fine you know there's not that's not a big problem I just think that um, as time goes on, maybe you can recruit some more people that want to give up their time. You know, the, the hours that are spent now just in training to become a firefighter is ridiculous. I should I, I shouldn't say ridiculous. It's Come in time and, it's, <laughs> and um, all I'm trying to put across here is is that it would be who the town to follow this rule of thumb, if you will, um, to support that, because if it was going to be a full-fledged town-run fire department, it would cost the taxpayers probably a million dollars a year. Yeah, it'd be huge. Instead of the 400000 or whatever it is, because you have to start paying people dearly to do this type of work. Right. Once you put on a, a crew, I mean, you can do, the, you, you have to do the math, you have to mm -hmm. go talk to towns that are, that are already done this with ambulance service and firefighters. Once you start filling shifts and stuff, that is very expensive. Mm -hmm. And that's, and you know, so, you know, I spent a long time on this, on this department in my, own, in my younger days. And, um, I just feel that um, volunteering is, is probably a thing of the past, mm -hmm. but that's what kept this department going. Yeah. And um, so, I, I mean, I listen to Matt, you know, all the legals and all that stuff. I'm not up on that. And, and that's, what needs to be, that's what needs to be found out. That's what somebody needs to go and say, hey, what happens? What do we have to do? This and that. I mean, I think the biggest problem with the, with the with the corporation is maybe you have members that are saying, 
we're going to give up something. What are we gaining? You know, they can't see yeah. the light at the end of the tunnel. And I think that gaining, gaining some um, people that are going to stay in the fire station, gaining a little bit of administrative uh, work being done so they can train, that's a big plus. Mm -hmm. You know, I see insurance, um, insurance policies maybe joining, you know, get a better rate. You know, I just, you know, that kind of stuff. But uh, that's just my opinion. No, that's good. Yeah, so speaking of joining, I, I have it here somewhere. So right now, Article 2 is shall the town collect four and a half million dollars for the town duties. And Article 6 says should the town pay the Berlin Volunteer mm -hmm. Fire Department 424000 <clears throat> If you roll them together into one, and they move forward as a town. We outsource our ambulance to Barrytown. We get our dispatch because we have a psychiatric ward and we have that pilot program, so we're not paying for that either. But if you roll your fire department, your road crew, and the police department all into one, you know, if you need a few hundred thousand dollars, it's 4% of the budget. For them, it's 60% of the budget. So when you go to the voters and say, this is what we need to bring our own fire department to fruition, and we could have you know, the Berlin Town Emergency Response, <coughs> Police and Fire, whatever mixed together, something like that. But it's rolled together as the towns, not as a private corporate. And <clears throat> I think that's just more acceptable by the voters, saying yeah. that this is, you know, we're pitching out all this money, and it's now ours. So, Nick. So, I'd like to speak on that point right there. You say it would be more acceptable to the, to the voter. However, mm -hmm. our fire department article gets a higher vote of yes than the town budget does. So, it seems <laughs> more town voters approve the fire department budget than the voters. Try sticking, try sticking three hundred thousand dollars on the budget and see how it goes. I don't think it'll go. Well, just, just number wise, right now it seems the department gets more yeses for voting than, than the town budget. Correct, but the fire department right now is a shrinking entity in a town that's growing like a weed, and I think the select board and the local folks can't sit back and just say, as Matt says, we're to one tone away. Let's not wait until it's too late. Let's preempt, let's be proactive, let's help the fire department. We're not changing anything, Nick, except we're putting people in the station. So what the firefighters are looking for? So the firefighters are looking for a proposal and an understanding as to how the department is going to be run and operated if the merger takes place. That's what they'd like to know. They'd also like to know, you're proposing to pay two people here. Well, are they going to, the ones that are already doing the work, are they going to get paid? That's are what they, they'd like to know. Are they being paid now? Some, very little, about $3.65 per call. So if we did absolutely nothing, would that change? Probably. No. Possibly, yes. So well, I think, so let me ask you this. You've been meeting for six months now. Right. What have you identified as impediments to, you know, a merger? I well, think, I think we just heard it. Right there. <laughs> but, you know, okay. as Matt says, we but, can... But since you're both on the committee, right? To, that's what we're tasking this committee to come up with. I'm going to ask you, don't hold your committee meeting here tonight. Right. Go back and come to us. That's what I'm asking for. Come back to us with a proposal. Right. The proposal. Two, and whether it's an up or down. It might, it might be, in fact, be a down. <laughs> You know, we, we don't think it's time to do it at this time. And but, that's the and way I see it, that we're just shy of that, the proposal. <clears throat> and right. in the midst of that, we're getting uh, perspective and views and having the meeting that we had that preempted these questions, but we're not quite there for the proposal. Well, so you bring up a good point. A little bit, as Matt said, I think the committee may be needing some direction because we are up to our eyeballs in questions in tour. We can't bring you that proposal. But honestly, I think... I'm, I'm not asking to you at this time. Yeah. But I think the questions, though, that everybody continues to ask are questions that we can't answer, the corporation can't answer, and truthfully, I don't even think the select board can answer them 
ahead of this. Some of this has to be taken a little bit on faith. And I just don't know that we have a lot of that to pass around right now. The, the, the questions that continue to come up in the conversations and in the corporate meetings, well, what are they going to get paid? Well, who's going to do this? Who's going to do that? Honestly, the only thing that we can truly answer back is that the town will conduct HR uh, issues in accordance with law and policy, and that the fire chief's going to answer to the select board. And like the uh, chief from Austin said, a lot more questions are going to come up after, after this is, if we, if we end up going that direction, yeah. I mean, Nick, I think the, the I think your questions are all valid, but I think it's the, the, the fact, the idea of a merger doesn't create more money, right? It doesn't mean that there's suddenly more money to pay people. I think it, that's something that would have to happen over time. A budget has to be created. But I think I think Pete's point was that a budget that's 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 sort of lumped that's public safety budget together that increases might be more palatable to be able to create some of those changes. But I think the, the mere fact that there's a merger doesn't mean there's suddenly I mean, trust me, the first budget thing I had to go through was really painful because there's nowhere to cut and right. things are just going up and up. So it doesn't suddenly mean the town has more money to give. It just means we try to create um, efficiencies and we try to work toward the things that you think that you, that you want as a fire department. That's, that's, I mean, that's my perspective. And the thing I think of is loud and clear, there's tremendous respect from the fire department in the town that hasn't wavered at all but I see it and I wrote this down when we were talking you said it very well when you said stepping up versus stepping in and I see it as a paradigm shift of increased level of support from the town of Berlin but in my opinion much would stay the same but there would be that increased support in other ways that might be conducive to being very helpful and, and I think more you know more communication about what those needs are would happen mm -hmm. so that we could help you get to where you need to be. Very uh, much collaboration, the back and forth. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's how I, I personally see it. But. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Matt? You get your hand up or just oh, hold, <laughs> hold your head in despair? <laughs> no, not really in despair. Just um, yeah. the <laughs> okay. Uh, but thank you all for everything yeah. you're doing. Yeah. Very much yeah. so. Yeah. And thank you for coming and speaking. And thank you, Flo. Yeah. You're yeah. on the committee. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you all for all your dedication. Thank you, thank you everyone. Uh, Recreation Committee update. First, we got Hi, some yeah. exciting yeah, but I've got opportunities. Ashley here with Ashley. me as well. Come on up. Oh. <laughs> got some uh, okay exciting to stand on here. Here. Make yourselves comfortable. <laughs> thank you for your patience. Oh, no problem. Learned about problems I didn't know existed. <laughs> yeah. I think we came to a good meeting. <laughs> Hi, thanks for uh, welcoming us tonight. I'm Therese Farrell. I've uh, lived in Berlin like what, 14 years now. I'm Ashley. Um, I'm Ashley Lachance, and I'm a resident in Berlin just for about three years now from Massachusetts. I have two kids at Berlin Elementary. Nice. Right, so is Jeff? Yeah, we Jeff just live right next yeah, door. Yeah, Jeff. Okay. Yeah. 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 So. Um, uh, been in the community for a while and we've seen kind of like a slew of different um, Berlin youth uh, rec administrators kind of take over the program and finally kind of have um, consists you know some support from amongst other families on wanting to take over um, the organization of Berlin youth sports um, currently I don't know if you guys are familiar with kind of how totally. these sports happen in the school right now but um, right now it's um, coordinated by um, an athletic coordinator who oversees uh, Berlin, Callis, Romney, and Doty, and then East Montpelier has their own rec committee. And so right now she, um, you know, does all the registrations, the scheduling, coordinates all the gym times, 
coordinates all the material. You know, so it's like a big ask for one person to do that for four oh, schools, yeah. essentially, yeah. right? It's a lot. And so the way it's East Montpelier runs it is they have a rec committee, mm -hmm. um, which obviously Berlin has a rec committee, so we're looking to become like a subcommittee of the rec committee, so not asking for more members on it. We would just be sort of a subcommittee, and we would um, essentially, and this is how I reached out to True, was that we were looking to have a subpage on the Berlin Town page, so that way there's no confusion, like, oh, we're on the Berlin Rec Committee, but it's this totally separate web page. So we wanted to do a um, web page on Berlin for communication, to do the schedules on there, and then to have online registrations. Um, you know, it would all be volunteer. We're not asking for paid time employees <laughs> or anything <laughs> like the fire department is. Um, but we thought as parents, and Ashley should certainly chime in, you know, we thought that would give us a lot more in terms of you know when registration is open, you yeah. know, kind of increased opportunities right now. You know the soccer schedule typically is pretty small; like they don't do registrations until school starts, and then it mm -hmm. it just seems like our programs are a lot smaller than kind of East Montpelier is able to do with their own like individual rec committee. And so here tonight to kind of explain our initiative to you guys, and then really um, I know the web the website. You know we'll take a little bit of work from the um, the town and the clerk staff. Um, but really, we think you know we'll increase quite a bit of opportunities for our kids, mm -hmm. um, and really kind of put some ownership back into the town in terms of how you know you get volunteer coaches, which are always sort of um, an great. issue yeah. when you're getting an email from somebody that you don't even know from another town. Um, you know, we'll be able to reach out to parents that we know that typically are able to volunteer mm -hmm. to to kind of have that grassroots initiative. Right now, the way sports are run, there's a lot of gaps. Um, it's run all by parent volunteers are the coaches. Um, they're not getting the support that they need. Uh, basically, we're looking to bridge those gaps mm -hmm. between parents, community, um, staff members. Uh, we're making, we'd like it to be, you know, not just you go to practice, you go to a game, and that's your, that's your experience. We're looking, we're really looking to make a community experience. I was gonna say, this is a great community builder. I, I totally support it. Mm -hmm. I think it sounds wonderful. Yeah. Great. What can we, what, what do you need? Uh, really, kind of the bridge right now is just getting that sub page set up. I know um, we chat a couple times. I think we have a meeting set up on Thursday at, mm -hmm. at two o'clock on Thursday. So it'll be kind of getting access to our subcommittee, which sounds so good. Yeah. <laughs> to our subcommittee to be able to really, you know, to build it out and to have continual access so that way we're not having to reach out to Rachel yeah. or the, the staff down the hall to, you know, to do that. I mean, that's asking, you know, like we're not asking them to do the scheduling. It's just like, hey, give us the password and, you know, administrative so we can have access to that sub page. And then, two, it will be an ask for the treasurer. You know, because we, uh, we would like to do, um, Celia, the principal, asked for us to have suggested donations and not have it be a barrier for some families that can't participate. But we will be, you know, collecting like a very small registration fee. So we will need help from the treasurer to sort of manage manage that and provide us a report. And as, as time goes on, in. we would like to do a lot of fundraising. Um, and again, we're, we don't want it to be the type of thing where we're just asking for money. Um, we want it to be hold community events, right? Hold our own jamborees where we raise money. Um, this would be yeah. a great way too to bridge the gap between Berlin Elementary <coughs> and Berlin Recreation, right? That could also get some traction on the Berlin website. Uh, a lot of people that might not even know that it's there, or you know, know or normally visit it, mm -hmm. um, they're going to that website, right? Mm -hmm. So that will help bridge that gap as well. Yep. Does the treasurer know about this? Yes. Okay. <laughs> just just <laughs> check. And I yeah. <laughs> will not be supporting you on the web page because I tried creating it okay. and I blew away the entire rec, the rec board's uh, okay. web page. So <laughs> yeah. I had to sheepishly go and ask okay. <laughs> for the uh, backup to be restored. Oh, so. no. <laughs> well, that, that would be one of the questions I'd have. Is, is there an ability to have limited access? That's something we're still looking into. I, okay. I think it is. Okay. There's ways around that. If it yeah. could be like a sub page, like, you know, you click on the link and, and then it kind of brings, it brings you to page. something. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. And if that's a hurdle, we can always, you know, pay for with, you know, within the rec committee, our own page. We just thought like, hey, the Berlin already has a page, you know, if it be, yeah. seems mm -hmm. easier from our perspective to have it be kind mm -hmm. of part of the same mm -hmm. website. Well, the do link to Jeff, I mean, uh, not Jeff, uh, Tony does stuff with the, for the planning commission on the website, doesn't he? Or no? Tony Sloan? Mm-hmm. So it should be an option. Okay. Yeah. And Tony's not, really good at that. Look stuff. at another thing. Tony's a great resource okay. too. 
Tony, He's now Tony the chair. Snow. Tony's now the chair of the planning commission okay. now. He he did um, helped with a lot of the campaigns we did for for some of the voting. Okay. So he's he was tracking things on you know how many hits we got on the website and all that okay. stuff. So he knows quite a bit about that. Okay. So okay. Yeah, we can reach out to him as well. And then you're looking for Instagram and. Yeah, those we, types of stuff as well. Yeah, either, you know, we can work with the clerk, you know, just as another way to kind of, you know, get the word out about registrations closing or yep. scheduling changes. Um, I know, I, I don't believe the Berlin Rep Committee currently has their own Facebook page, so whatever sort of clearance we need to build one of those for them, you know, I'd appreciate it. Okay. Yeah, and that's not some, that's something that I wouldn't mind running to if we just got yep. the approval to make it an official town page if not we could always do friend the friends of like i do i have one for berlin elementary um it's not official so i make it clear fr friends, friends of, of. Mm -hmm. right Very berlin nice. has a facebook page doesn't it mm -hmm. yes. yeah so well i don't know what official that requires an official act but <laughs> official vote but probably i've just seen other entities no offense um in other towns uh, sharing their personal website, or I should say Facebook page in this case, um, they've run into problems. So I, I just. I'm not sure what's well, I think that's, personal. Yeah, yeah. It, not, not personal, but. Creating new, creating time. I, I think the friends of, that's easy. If, if you're talking about giving access to the Berlin Facebook page. No, no, I'm oh, saying okay. an official Berlin recreation page right we could make one that was um berlin athletics berlin recreational athletics or yeah mm -hmm. you know something like that mm -hmm. yeah, we're really just here kind of just yes. yeah. bring awareness from what we're doing and obviously you know uh, working with true to kind of get the website exciting together. ideas yeah yeah, I think, you know, initially we'll just sort of stick to the sort of traditional offerings that they have at the school, you know, soccer and basketball, um, but looking to kind of expand it into like a, not a girls on the run program. They have, the, um, Northfield does a strong girls program, oh. which is really great. It promotes like self-awareness, self-esteem, um, bringing some things in like that, um, maybe a runner's club, um, maybe a lot more events, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, currently kind of under the current program, you know, it's really difficult to do our, like our own little jamborees or tournaments, you know, it's rather limited to just that East Montpelier kind of one they have. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> Sounds good. I, I'm, I understand what you're saying about the Facebook thing. I don't know how that would normally work, whether it would be somebody that would approve posts before they went. I mean, I, I'll look into that just to see if there's some, okay. how those normally operate or, okay. or what kind of uh, parameters have to be set. And we can maybe talk about that down the road. Sounds good. I truly appreciate you both coming forward Thank and your you. passion yeah. and wanting to yeah, do it. Yeah, great. It's wonderful. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for coming. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have, have a great evening. Capital Improvement Plan kickoff. Colonel and on with us. There are three documents in your packet. Right on schedule tour, 7.30. <laughs> we will keep you on schedule. So at our, I think it was our last meeting, on, I know I've been talking about a capital improvement plan and capital budgeting, you know, for a long time and uh, we sent out the RFP. Um, Stone Shore is our uh, winner from that. Uh, Carl Rogers, former uh, town manager of Barrytown, very well familiar with us. And Ron Rajinski, close enough. Perfect. From Richmond and Underhill and that area. So two former town administrator, I'm town managers. <laughs> So, turn it over to you two. Okay. Uh, yep, Ron Rajensky, Stone Shore Municipal Consulting, retired from 33 in Vermont politics and select board meetings last June. Started my consulting business. Went right back to the same town that Ed was 
retired from because they were in transition with trying to find somebody new. So ever since June, we've been uh, helping towns from Williamstown up to Belvedere and Westford and Johnson. And that's how Carl and I got connected. He had some, um, some interim work with uh, both towns actually. And we decided to uh, entertain your request. So glad and appreciate your opportunity. So first of all, we, we do have, um, and Carl, I don't know if you want to introduce yourself. It's not like you're familiar, but. You yes, so Carl Rogers, um, and I retired from the Berrytown manager position at the end of April last year. And uh, even before I retired, I was contacted about going to Johnson to be their interim town administrator. And, and I ended up <laughs> being there um, until September. And before I got done there, I was contacted about going to Westford because they knew their town administrator was leaving. And so I worked up there at Westford part time until early January. And then I didn't know what I was going to do. And in the meantime, I had <clears throat> worked with Ron, as he said, both in Johnson and in Westford. And I saw this. Um, RFP here and contact us, ask if it was something that you'd be interested in. And so um, here we are. Here we are, and um, it sounds like your um, you know, officials here are very excited about this uh, undertaking. Very, yeah. we are. As you can see from the rest of the meeting so far tonight, we have a lot of need. Capital, capital, capital. I was going to say that. Yeah, yeah. That's why I came early, because you did have a lot of things on there that might touch on what we're going to be doing. Mm -hmm. We appreciate that, too. Yeah. So, that, and that's, I'll just, I'm going to take like a little big, big brush. You know, it's a short story guy over there. I don't know your name, but yeah. short story, yeah. long story, right? Short story is uh, there's nothing better for municipalities to have an understanding of what you own and what the O&M costs are and what the replacement cycle is. Mm -hmm. That's the short story. You can't really respond uh, properly unless you have it sort of under your control. Mm -hmm. I've been worked with uh, Hyde Park. We found two cemeteries that we thought the association owned. It was really mm -hmm. deeded to the town in 1865, but people forget mm -hmm. about that over 100 years. So things like that, um, mm -hmm. you really just having a good understanding allows you to, to make better choices with your, with your dollars. And there, there actually is a bunch of money, like your regional planning people are saying, hazard mitigation, flood work. Mm -hmm. um, for some reason, the federal government keeps borrowing money and sending it to towns, which isn't, that's up for debate too. But anyway, that's the situation you're in. So if you want to make access to those things, there's nothing like projects on the shelf. How do you get projects on the shelf? You understand what your needs are. So that's our big brush. The immediate need is to have the kickoff meeting introduce ourselves. And we've already started reaching out with tours help uh, to the committees. So that's our initial big slug of outreach is to get to know people. Yep. Uh, what are your needs? Wait, I've looked at some minutes and people are nibbling around projects and I'm not quite sure if they make them to your desk. <laughs> you know, so, you know, like mm -hmm. who's, who's, oh, we got these great ideas. Who's capturing those ideas? Would it be something the board would never support that the voters voted down three times in the last 10 years? Why are you spending your time on it? That kind of communication that mm -hmm. really is uh, good, especially fire departments merging and capital impacts there and uh, all that fun stuff. So we'll get to all that and we'll have good notes. The intention of the process right now is to is to take notes and give you feedback as to kind of where we're headed. So we're not going to go away and come back in six months to you. You know, you'll have regular through the town administrator, interim town administrator uh, communication. So that if, you, if you see, hey, we got some, you didn't mention this yet. Aren't you going to get that? You know, that's the kind of feedback we'll need during the course of the project. Mm -hmm. uh, we will have um, in the end you will, we'll have a draft, which will be back to your table, uh, planning commission table. Planning commission typically would be, uh, have an option to do capital budgeting for the town. I don't know if they have done that before, or if that's part of their bailiwick, but it's a may under state law. Select board's certainly welcome to do it, but it's better if both boards are sort of, sort of the lead, even though we're gonna be working directly for you. Mm -hmm. uh, planning commission has um, their, their own uh, goals and objectives during the year that we'll, we'll be relying on for them to bring forward to us. And then the very end, you'll have a choice to um, adopt, pass on, <laughs> implement what, you know, the, the final. Uh, 
I don't believe you all have any impact fees. If you did, then we'd have a, a statutory responsibility to have a public hearing and a formal adoption every every year. So beyond that, you have a working tool, you know, a, a model. It's some, some document that all the boards, all the select board, all any a public can go to to see kind of a glimpse into the 5, 10, 15 year future. Not all of it fully funded, but hopefully the next year is fully funded. Yeah. <laughs> you know, maybe maybe the five years are fully funded, like they're talking about for the bridge project. It's obligated, now you just have to go through all the steps to get there. Mm -hmm. so. You just mentioned impact fees. Do you, uh, I, I'm trying to find out more about those. Is that something that you? Yeah, so part of what we wanted to do tonight, and Carl has um, the prepared list that we had for the meeting, is to come yeah. up with those topics that mm -hmm. aren't necessarily in the RFP, not on the discussion tonight, but new things. Mm -hmm. Capital plans and impact fees do go together. So if you wanted to identify rec fees, school fees, probably not, highway for yourselves, fire impact fees. We've been talking about it, but I'm not pretty, sure. Pretty extensive, yeah. um, almost like a, a financial auditing type of world because all of those can be challenged because you're going to assess that on a developer. And sometimes right. developers, I mean, a big bike big fight in South Burlington about that. And developers that had a lot invested in to be developed properties. And then they're like, hey, now we're gonna build. And they had thousands of dollars of impact fees and they wanted to know that all the statutory requirements for assessment were done the right way, including the capital plan, so that it was proportionally shared by everybody and not just lumped onto a couple big projects. Yeah. And, and that's where you end up with sometimes uh, special assessment districts and things like that, which is, can be an alternative to an impact fee. Um, so there's lots of ways to get at the, the funding part. We're, initially, what we're gonna do is try to get that big snapshot of where are you guys at? You know, you have a town center plan, at the, the capital improvement plan, it's three years old now, I think. Um, that Not bad, it looks nice. We, Brandy Saxton did that with uh, Place yeah. Sense, I think, and mm -hmm. it looks, it's readable, easy mm -hmm. to see not maintained you know that's right and that's my concern we had to, for, we had to do it for the town center basically. yeah i saw the letter from the state <laughs> that said <laughs> oh by the way if you want designation you're supposed to do this yeah. now that's fine you checked the box because it wasn't yeah. really the formal it was like an either or mm -hmm. it was like do this infrastructure planning or have a capital plan i think what they're implying was have a formal hearing and adopt it officially or at least have all the nuts and bolts over here fully vetted mm -hmm. yeah and you sort of came up in between that would look like a really decent capital plan but it was a snapshot exactly not ingrained in your annual work plan That's not right. part of a statutory mandate at this point whether they would write a new letter and say oh you know it's a little old now can you update that possibly i wouldn't be surprised if they didn't catch you on that sometime. yeah so carl i don't know if you want to jump into that. that's a big picture and little picture now we can get into some little little more pointed mm -hmm. questions to help us yeah, some details of uh, the, the first um, the bullet. Um, Ron's already reviewed the process. But we were wondering if um, there are any other groups or committees you think that we should talk with other than the ones we listed in our uh, proposal. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so on our, our list, we had uh, the departments um, and then um, the Conservation Commission, the Recreation Committee, Planning Commission, and the Public Works Board. And I believe I just, and of course yourselves. Um, economic is development. Right? I'm sorry. Is that? Economic development. I'm sorry. Economic yeah. development okay, is in our proposal. Okay. Yes, and um, yeah, and I had unofficially uh, attended their meeting last week just to introduce this work. And uh, in, in our notes here, we uh, put down as an example the, the city of Montpelier. Uh, we were just because of your um, association with them for. Uh, sewage treatment. We were wondering if if there was some issue there that we should talk to the city of Montpelier about, or are there any other group? Anybody outside of? I mean, we don't have a lot to do with Barry City as far as agreement. We have one with Montpelier with the sewer. Um, Nothing with East Montpelier. We do have ambulance service through Northfield for one Barry. section of town. Um, I don't know if does 
do you have any agreement with the fire or are you just mutual aid? That's mutual aid. Yeah. But you have Barrytown and Northfield for your ambulance. Yeah. yeah. So the uh, Regional Planning Commission was here tonight and they're looking at a lot of things with the hazard mitigation, but do you have a Sometimes the Regional Planning Commission has a pretty strong role in major, like large culverts and road inventories and all those other things. Is that, is that something they've done for you on a regular they've basis? They've done culvert inventories. And there's no current projects that they're managing for you? Some, some Regional Planning Commissions will have a service agreement to manage multiple projects. Okay, just want to make sure that that's not. I still think it would be good to to work, to talk to them because I think prioritizing can, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. they will take have a role I think in prioritizing regional type things, and so I think it's important to, for them to be maybe part of the process. Yes. I guess we should, um, yeah, we plan to reach out to the regional planning commission to get uh, the culvert inventory, yeah, okay, and uh, learn about some of these other programs. Um, but then at the, at the same time, uh, we could find out if there's something in the works. And um, and um, I guess a follow-up to this first uh, bullet, uh, your emergency management director, are you still in that position? Uh, actually, Chief Pontebrand is the actual director. Okay. And um, you have an emergency management plan, I would assume. and. Um, yeah, about the hazard mitigation plan is that been adopted recently or is i think it's been three years now okay we're so just about to start the process we're start, so we would want it's to, something that has to be done every five years so mm -hmm. we're just about at the yeah. starting process on that and we would be talking with the chief so now i guess we could add that emergency management discussion mm -hmm. to a, the, the police department discussion when we meet with them so you can think about um about that, if there's any other group that you, know, you would like us to meet with. Um, yeah, one of the other I'm questions we had. Oh, I'm sorry. The, the, um, the capital plan for the radio system. Or capital fire. So, a capital fire, yeah. So, they do have a capital plan, a 10 year plan. So, that's part yeah. of the mutual aid mm -hmm. packet. So, we could share that with you as well. Yeah. That's good. Thank you. Good point. Yeah, certainly any plans, purchasing plans that are substantial. Some sometimes you have it. Sometimes the highway guys have it in the back of their head, but they don't tell you. Mm -hmm. It's like we know that something's. We we get surprised once by all our fire gears past its twenty year life. You know, we need. They don't it. go twenty years. We, we, we need it. Like, <laughs> it was so far past that they need it. And it's ten years, right? So it's, it's whatever they thinking about is what we're going to try to draw it out, and, and it's not just maybe a truck. The building it could be something like a major, multi, like a whole uniform change over the air, escape, you know, building out big electronic systems on there. So whatever those are, it's, it may not be as evident that it is capital, which is a little bit harder to draw out. Okay, and our second um, question was about our uh, point of contact. Uh, would would that be the town administrator or interim town administrator? Yep. Work through a tour. Okay. Um, and when we get to the public works area, especially uh, the water and the sewer, um, there's going to be times when there's going to be some technical engineering type of, of questions. In our proposal, we propose that um, with the select or the town's approval, that we could contact your consulting engineers to ask them questions, but the town would bear the cost if the engineers were to bill for that. Is that acceptable to you? Again, it would be with with the town's approval that we would contact them and ask questions. Any idea what what you what you'd be looking at for uh, time value of their or value of their time? Well, not until we get into it more. Um, so, when we wrote the proposal, we I don't think we knew just how um, involved your water system is in terms of pumps and, and storage tanks and whatever. Since then, we've learned that. It's basically a gravity feed system, so that cuts down on the question. So what I was thinking of before was we, we might need to know about, um, you know, like at a pump station, 
is it at 85 percent of capacity now or now old or those pumps that would more a newer pumps be more efficient and just make sense to replace no. anyway because of these energy savings so that's the kind of thing that we would be looking at is a capacity both for pumps and uh, for lines like our how full are your uh, wastewater lines running? Are you, is the town looking at the possibility of having to increase the size of pipes in certain air parts of the town just because of the development that is taking place? Um, and I'm, just, I'm looking at the uh, point of contact. <laughs> so we come up with our question at the end of doing what Carl was. It was like, here's two or three questions that we need or can we, we think it'll be a three hundred dollars? You know, you're looking for like a cap, so it's not over ended. Yeah. But I think each time we would make contact, we would flush it out, and you you would make yeah. the call on whether it's acceptable or not. Yeah, it's, what, what's our cap for us up to ten thousand? Yeah, so you're all set. <laughs> <laughs> so he can make the decision. Yeah, <laughs> assume you have um, regular consulting engineers for your water system and for your wastewater sure. already yeah. is it is otter creek otter, otter creeks for the water and west and samson for the sewer i think if we get to a point where it's up here then we'll stop and we'll have another conversation about what to do about that yeah mm -hmm. i think so it was it should be not elementary but it's not going to be a study or anything it's going to be more fact finding well, most of the stuff you'll be looking for is probably on the computer anyway. So you have to keystroke away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if we find anything out of bounds, we'll not proceed. So, um, in one of the documents that we provided, I guess it's the long, uh, I think, 15 page document that uh, towards the end there is some um, tables about. Uh, thresholds. And what we mean by that is that um, at some point the select board is going to have to decide what the threshold or thresholds will be for what items are to be included in the capital improvement plan. And we're not asking you to decide that tonight because I think you should see the list of items that might be included in the capital improvement plan first. So obviously if you set the, the amount too low, like at $2,500, you're gonna have a lot more items in the capital improvement plan and that means you have a lot more things to manage mm -hmm. in that every year. If you set it too high, then you might not be setting aside the money and you might find yourself at some point in the future, like Ron was just saying, we need this now, but the town hasn't been setting aside the money for it. So, uh, just be thinking about that. And probably the majority of towns that have a CIP probably have one threshold. And so they say everything, it's $5,000 or more, $10,000 or more. But I don't think it has to be just an amount per for everything. You might consider, like for vehicles, you know, it might be 20,000 or, or something a little bit higher, uh, but then, uh, parts of your building that have a much longer life, maybe you want to have a lower amount uh, to capture some of those things like a roof or a, a boiler or something. Yeah. So um, just take a look at those sense. pages in that handout mm -hmm. and, and be thinking about that. Once we come back to you with the list of items that the town already owns and some of the wish list items, then you could decide what you want the threshold to be. Um, next item we wanted to ask about um, is to, just to touch on the funding. And we know that uh, recently the voters approved the 1% optional sales tax and the town's intent is to apply that to your capital improvements. Um, but there's other sources you might have money coming directly out of your town budgets to go into a reserve fund to save up money for the next greater as an example 
uh, or you could be looking at borrowing or at grants. Um, but are you looking for Ron and myself to provide a lot of input and suggestions on that, or is that something you're just looking for us to provide the cost and then tell you how much per year you should be setting aside once you decide in the life cycle or the target date for building something? Um, That's an excellent question. I'd like to know what the options are. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Mm -hmm. And how they work. Mm -hmm. Right. Impact fees are in there. Yeah, right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Special, and you know, you mentioned the special assessment districts yep. and those kinds of things. I'd really like to know how, you know, about each and of those and how they yeah. work. And, and then you have your unguaranteed grant cycles. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people will wait till the next disaster for that bridge. Because you know, mm -hmm. they know it's so close. Yeah. Not saying they do that in you know practice, but sometimes it just happens that you can't get to something, and then right. Mother Nature yeah. takes it. Exactly. And then you're on that schedule all of a sudden. Yeah. So all those things we want to have. Um, that is a real factor. That those things do upset your planning. Right. They yeah. thrust you yeah. here and thrust yeah. you I mean, there. All the resources go here, and yeah. oh, geez, we forgot. Sorry. You know. Yeah. Oh, I had a thought in Lover's Lane, just as I was thinking about pushing things around. Uh, I've been in a couple of situations where you get those answers that you got tonight and no help for Lover's Lane. The system overcomes any necessity to help the interim. Mm -hmm. The only solution I've ever found is your uh, house reps and senators. Mm -hmm. oh, it's the only thing that I've ever found that at least you, you can touch on them if you've done all of the administrative dead ends, so to speak. Sometimes there's a way that somebody is mm -hmm. can help you find the light on it, especially with a four or five year. Yeah. The four or five year could be seven. Mm -hmm. you know, I don't know what the situation is other than four or five years, there's a lot of variables in there, yeah. even if you're fully obligated. So if that's a critical road and you want to do something, there might be some way to, to get temporary bridge that's or funding. I don't know. Any other of your experience? Have you found a way to sh streamline we had, we, the process it was with a, the it state? Was a, it was a good, it was a really good story back, oh geez, long it's been years ago now, 20 years ago, but it was a bridge over the Winooski in uh, Jonesville, and the, it was an old iron, you know, railroad bridge that had just totally, you know, the highway guys were putting signs over the holes in the bridge deck, and we ended up reducing, reducing, reducing the weight until it was the next reducing was going to be closed. Mm -hmm. And at that point, the select board did what I just suggested. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Sanders came out to the bridge and they found money and the congressional designated money to accelerate the project. You're talking, you're talking about the system tonight, the VTRAN system, mm -hmm. the yeah. regional, and that's right. fine. That works. The community has the, really the only other avenue is the more the politics side of things, and you know they want to hear that it's a it's a real need. I don't know what's like I said. I don't know the situation, but yeah, um, sometimes worth a call. Just say hey. I do believe think, there's uh, good potential for help in that direction. Yeah, there could be, mm -hmm. and it, sometimes mm -hmm. it's chair of the board calling right. somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, the board want that call to be met. You know. Mm -hmm. Also, you would want to be sure that the town is a good partner in the project. So if they're asking for something from the town. Be sure you, you get answers to them right away, whether it's from at the staff level, mm -hmm. just information or if action is needed um, by you know, the town officially from the select board. Be a good partner and provide that information as quickly as you can. And also, uh, you, or, you might have picked up on it. He mentioned one of the things tonight is that in the scoping, they have to meet with the property owners who might be impacted by the project mm -hmm. sort of talk the project up and the need and necessity for this mm -hmm. and encourage them to cooperate also Quickly. with um, yeah. with v trend because their hands are tied by what they have to do mm -hmm. with that right-of-way acquisition yeah. and it can take a long time if somebody's not cooperative because of the process that you have to go through that domain yeah, all well, the little steps get four in the domain. Well, I mean, but if they have to go through that, that's even longer. longer. Yeah, even longer. Yeah. That's right. Yes. We could get this gentleman that was here, and he could probably get his neighbors to <laughs> whip him up. <laughs> uh, so, 
sell your land, sell that little piece, whatever the state needs. Yeah, definitely stick with potentially two tracks. And, and be sure that uh, the project manager, <coughs> the man who was here tonight is not the project manager for that project, but be sure that project manager knows about what you heard tonight. And or what you might do. Mm -hmm. yeah. a heads up if you might do something more than <laughs> wait for their schedule to re evolve. Because everybody likes to be on the same page when yeah. somebody's trying to jump the line, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, yeah. So, so true. Better be upfront about it. And go. Our next uh, question was uh, might uh, be a bit more involved in the discussion, and that was about um, the um, select board's understanding of the town plan and the CIP, how they will relate to each other. I believe I saw in the town plan that um, there was mention of you needed to get or was recommended to get a capital improvement plan. Mm -hmm. And also, how does the the uh, town center CIP um, or that infrastructure plan relate uh, to this work that we're going to be doing? Are you, are you looking for us to uh, add the new town center infrastructure into this town capital improvement plan, or are you just going to let that one stand on its own? I personally think it should be incorporated. That should be one. I don't know what. And I think that, well, you're obviously going to meet with the planning commission. I'm not up to, to speed exactly on what's happening over there, but, um, well, tour probably is. But I, too much. But. but I definitely think you should, it should be one, um, in my opinion, because it doesn't. Just for uniformity. Make a lot of else. sense it to does. have. It does. Yeah. Makes, it makes total sense to combine yeah. and be one. And especially since that literally was, like you're saying, a snapshot. It needs to be, you know, developed and, and planned out as well. Mm -hmm. And if nothing else, think about the future of that infrastructure. Because otherwise we're just going to put it in the ground yeah. yeah, and then not think about it for 20 years until something happens and yeah. it's not even been on a radar screen for any length of time. So. Well, so at some point we're going to take over the road. Road, yeah, right. exactly. That's what okay. I'm thinking. You currently have hydrants in there and, and a, a mixed batch of hyd hydrants in there. Um, you know, our water system in, in Burlad. That's something you might want to look at. Is there is there's a lot there's there's some private hydrants. There's at least four different systems. Nice. It, all different all different install dates probably. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is there a and a, they're out of our control as a town. Well, now they are. But you, now they are. Did you sign an agreement to with the developers to take over those things, or is that just your per, per, Forecast. How long? How long ago was that? Uh, the Shaw's put in place. They have thirty thousand gallons of water. Thirty thousand. Supplying the sprinklers and the hydrants up there currently. And that's out of our control. With a five hundred gallon a minute pump. With a five hundred gallon a minute pump. That's it. And the with hydrants that haven't been tested, or we should say, we don't have open. records of. Or, yeah. Don't even know if they've how about open. that? Yeah. So is there a source of water? Is that from maybe the, the Montpelier water main coming through, or do they no, have I, an actual drilled well? I think they have well? their own drilled well. A drilled well. But it's a resource. It's a resource. Right. It's a private, currently a private resource. Yeah. Now, my, my specific question was, was maybe that's a good component of it. There's plenty of, and this goes back to the fire department discussion a little bit with MOUs. So before you get to ownership, you can have the MOU, and that would be be a give and take a little bit for the access to the resource where you exercise the hydrants and they allow you access you know that but it's got to be written down and agreed yeah. to and all that business if there's any formal offer of dedication which is what you're talking about with the roads at the center that can be conditioned if it's not already in place on full compliance with your yeah, standards it, it is yeah. mm -hmm. Yeah, so that that we probably should look at too. If that's, They're going to rebuild the road when they when they. Oh no! I, yeah, and, the, and it, yeah. the standards and all that. I probably want to look at that. <laughs> I think because if you're going to have us add that, then that's going to dictate. 
Well, well I think it's it. state standards. I don't think, I think a town just adopted the state standards, mm -hmm. right? So it's whatever the state standards are. I'm curious about the school. This this kind of intrigued me though. The whole incorporating the school and and do you, is that typically done, or do you because it's a different. But it talks about incorporating in this document. It talks yes, about yeah. incorporating the school, especially if you have impact fees. Even though it, at least so that the major projects might be scheduled around each other. But do you typically do that or? Yeah, here in Vermont, I would say typically not. Probably more issue when there was non-consolidation. Yeah. <laughs> right. This is now shared property. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the school impact fees are their own animal. And I think we had one in, uh, we had one in Richmond, separate school study, town collected the fees based on building permits and then cut a check to the school. We didn't really oh. manage the finance part. We were more like the collector. Okay. As part of the zoning permit process. Yeah, this might have been, this looks like it's got a 2007 date on it, so maybe that's mm -hmm. just. Yeah. And so. also I think it's written for, you know, nationally and in other states um, where, especially once you get south and west of Pennsylvania, um, you either live in a city or you live in the county. Mm -hmm. This is Vermont yeah. land use. This is a Vermont document, oh, unless Vermont they pulled it. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, in any case, yeah, it you can, looks you like can, it might be old. <laughs> you can't do it for the. You can't have an impact fee for the schools. No sense of any more combination than that. The okay. collecting part. Okay. Yeah. So, Tor, would you be able to give us information about these four other water systems? I contact you to. See who Just we'll, we'll get we'll give him the information, okay. and he's going to be your point of contact. Okay. Yeah, I think anything that the town is using generally, or even in concept, is good to capture, even if it doesn't make it to the capital plan, because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it may be part of the capital plan someday. But right now, it's not, but it's there. Other than a comprehensive, that's about as comprehensive of a list as you could get. Is you take things you don't have control of, but might. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, So um, what I'm hearing is several members think that maybe we, we should be um, like marrying the, the, the town center plan with the town-wide plan. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. okay. yeah. All right, other documents, um, hazard mitigation plan, um, and then you can see the list there in that uh, long bullet, uh, road, e road erosion inventory, the culverts. Um, um, you have a list of bridges that the town has responsibility for. Anything like that that you think we should have, mm -hmm. or is there any? Are there any issues like that? One of you, like this building or somewhere else, some other building you have that where you have to make some improvements. Somebody's I think so. What are you uh, all of the above. But I mean, uh, mandated, type mandated, or regulatory kind That's of one level. Voter approved is another level. Health and safety is there. <laughs> so you're talk, talk about your your culverts and your bridges. Um, at some point, the next question is probably miles of road, dirt paved. Yes, yeah. we'll get that um, when we meet with uh, with Tim and uh, Tom. You know, we'll get that kind of information. Yeah. Yeah. And along oh, with it, all the good. guardrails that are That's intact that or not. Um, <laughs> well, I'll get a that would go that. along. That would go along with, with the road. The road, yeah. Okay. yeah. So, one of the, one of the things that towns miss, for lack of a better word, when they talk about road inventories, are all the add-ons, guardrail, signage, mm -hmm. stormwater structures that are along the road. Sometimes stormwater structures these days are stone-filled stone culvert, mm -hmm. um, you know, drain, you know, just big subsurface stone pits. You know, they're, they're there, they have a long life, but how, how far in, well, do, you have, do you have a sign inventory, you know, that kind of, is that a capital item? That's just me. <coughs> Does the highway guys know where every sign is? I don't know. That's a different sort of, that's a softer question. Guardrail is definitely in the capital zone mm -hmm. related to the roadways. So it's interesting you were talking about drainage and stone line ditches required in some areas. 5% or more. Right. 
and yeah. the loss of that during the flood. Yep. Um, Put it back under the FEMA claim. You mean? Well, if we're not keeping track of not just ditches, culverts, you know, maybe the, the stone line ditches. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So part of that's in the uh, REI. Uh, guardrails are not. So some of the storm line ditches have been inventoried as deficiencies. I don't know about once they're installed or what the maintenance plan is. We talked to the state once about that and they said, well, you know, you got that six, seven, eight inches of good stone in there and yeah, it's going to fill up with leaves and debris and snow plow sand or whatever. Uh, but that's fine. You know, you can have it as long as it's still sort of doing its job and its parabolic curve. Even if they get filled in and start to, you know, they're, they're not going to go anywhere because they're there. They're going to get flushed out from time to time, hopefully with the stone still there. But they didn't have a recommendation for us on maintenance. You know, how, how deep does that duff get in the ditch before highway should really go and create that new... Yeah, it's really hard to dig into stone and get the stuff out of it without taking all the stone out. Mm. And they said, no, that's not the intent of the MRGP requirements. It was stabilizing that area. Towns have to do the maintenance at whatever level you want to do. So that was Sounds the best like a road question fits in here, Brad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> About the erosion on the, under the guardrail. Right. <laughs> Lots of erosion. So we'll try, I'll try to get a better answer on that as far as what, what to do. I think in my stormwater comment, it was more about the structures, whether it has a catch basin, or whether it needs to be vacuumed out, those kind of major more sure. structures. If it's talking about roadside drainage, the REI, which is a mandatory permit requirement, is supposed to be done by the town on a schedule and then update every five years with your permits. So that's supposed to be self-managing as a maintenance item. What's not there are large culverts and such structures, not part of that. Has the select board in the past <coughs> made any decisions or do you have a practice that's been followed for quite some time regarding replacement cycles or any other um, parts of the process that we'll be going through? Well, the only one I know of is the, uh, uh, well, of course, right now, Tim's doing replacement on culverts. Um, then we have our replacement cycle on equipment. You do have something, is that in writing? I don't know if it's in writing or not. Every, so. I mean, we, we buy the extended warranties. When the warranty's out, we buy a new piece of equipment. Seven, maybe, on a plow trailer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we we found over the years that after seven years, it, it, the cost. Yep, no doubt about it. Especially nowadays. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not too much plastic. <clears throat> How much property do we as a town own in West Berlin? We have a firehouse, right? We don't own the fire department. We have a firehouse. Oh, you we have do. a firehouse. Okay. <laughs> well, that's, not part, that's not part of what he'll be looking at, for these gentlemen. Okay. Okay. They're not looking at it currently. currently. Yeah, that's on the list over here that's not quite under town control. We still want to identify that yeah, if, you're, sure. if you're making regular we use of the <laughs> municipality. Mm -hmm. It just makes sense to at least know one, two, you know, two stations. That kind of it stuff. Two no, but just so somebody can see that, sure. right? Mm -hmm. well, it's not zero. Right. What are we going to do with the money from selling the land? We, is that earmarked? You know, when we, we put that before the voters, I was amazed that nobody asked that question. Okay. You can write it right, check right to my house. Yeah. No, I, thought, I didn't know if these gentlemen knew about that. It sounds like. They're going to be looking at so much stuff. Saw you that. know about us selling yeah. the land. Yeah, we saw okay. that. Yeah. 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 Along with this 600 from one. There have certainly been some ideas thrown around. None yeah. of them have made it to the select board as far as I'm aware. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think <laughs> it's a really good time to ask a CIP question because of mm -hmm. other things that have happened here, plus your your growth pressure that you're feeling. Absolutely. So it's a, I would take a pause, maybe. I'll have a quote for a ladder trip for you. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Take a pause. Oh, I'm with you. Put it in the bank somewhere and put an investment. Yeah, yeah I'd love rainy to have day. A, a rainy day fund. A, a pause in the sense that you're asking you questions that will help you answer the question. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. But I mean that that uh, the money I'm sure is in has been uh, put in the bank, so it is drawing interest. 
Unless you took it home to her. For the dollars over there. Has it closed already? Yeah, it's closed. Yeah. Right. Postal closing. No, that's kind of three months or yeah. more down the road still. But that's the hotel. Hotel deal kind mm -hmm. of deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it it will it just that town meeting just struck me funny, nobody asked what was gonna to happen to that. Yeah. Do something good. That is kind of strange. <laughs> Are there any other things on the horizon or any other um, orders, um, for instance, that you've, you've received, um, maybe regarding your water and sewer system? Are you um, being required to upsize? Well, the, only thing, the only thing with water systems, we're adding more pipe, we're making a redundancy system. Um, Loop somewhere? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, uh, I don't know what, what 1.2 million something. Yeah, I don't know uh, if there's any. Um, okay. Any. Uh, That's a good loop. Uh, what the capacity on the wells are right now compared to the demand or what's been sold for. Uh, the capacity is good now with that fourth well. Is as much as the other three combined. So, so we're good right now on the capacity. But you're again looking to the future, mm -hmm. adding a fifth well potentially. You yeah. know, another tank. And one of the yeah. things that's happening is um, the hospital has been hot and cold about expanding. There's been talk about uh, you know tearing down part of the building, rebuilding it, and, and replacing the hospital that way. But now, did we take and say that if that were to happen, they'd have to buy water from our system? Or any new building would be required to buy water from the Berlin system? Yeah. I can't recall if that was part of it, but it may have been. I, yeah. I think it was at least strongly suggested, and I think they may have agreed, but I'm not positive. I yeah. think there was they a... Did a not they, they didn't agree? They did not agree. Oh, no. they didn't they, know. They were, look, well... Who knows what the politics of this was, but they were looking at having to make uh, upgrades to their tank, and so they were, you know, putting out the feelers about us, you know, connecting to our system, and you know, we think they got a better deal from Montpelier, uh, <laughs> and so they stayed with them. I know we had discussions about it when they brought the proposals, several proposals to the DRB, but I don't remember. Yeah. <clears throat> that was a while ago. But other than that, I don't, I can't, I haven't heard of anything else on the horizon. Sounds like that would be regulated by a water ordinance. Or something. Right. Have a competitor in your town. I think the next time we go through ISO, our storage capacity is going to be less than adequate. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good, good outcome of it. So, especially if your buildings get bigger. Okay. Well, number seven there over the other documents. That's something you could all be thinking about too. And if you think of something, you could. I think yeah, between Tor and Tom, they probably know most of them. Yeah. Not all of them. And when we meet with each of the, the boards or committees, this is going to be one of the questions too. Yeah. What do you have now that, that not just like what equipment are you have or facility you have, but what are the Plans. kinds of documents mm -hmm. that you might have that we should be looking at? Um, and maybe Ron, I'll let you take the next question about the, the software program or the platform that's. Sure. I think part of the RFP that was advertised talked about uh, probably the most important part, <laughs> which is which is uh, maintenance of the of the plan. So, what what do you all envision as people, software, training, uh, mandated directives from the select board to make sure that this plan, this capital improvement plan, is maintained? just like you would do a piece of equipment. So just like the town center, it was a snapshot and nobody's touched it. At least I don't think anybody's touched it since. Um, 
that's really not the purpose of the plan. So you're investing right now. And you'll need to invest or make it clear to staff, town administrator, future town administrator, future select boards that this is something that's important. So if it's important and if you want to facilitate maintenance, you have some choices. Excel is the basic kind of software program. They have probably a million and one different cloud-based digital systems that everybody can access with password and departments can go on and update their own stuff and the town administrator would still they have to audit that kind of activity. Uh, distribution and access to, uh, for the public, how it looks. Do you want it to be charts and graphs in color or Excel sheets in the next year? Very much like the Berlin Town Center. Had nice graphics, but it was really just the data and when things are scheduled. Yeah. But you can take that into revenue projections and expense and have it updated sort of easily, or you can have somebody that's more of a, from the bare bones Excel sheet to Excel Plus, which is somebody that knows the software that can convert data into charts and graphs themselves, or you can go the third way, which is more of a exploring some software. And of course, all the software systems that are out there, mostly they're on cloud now, they're $2,500 plus or minus annual, but it does allow staff to go on and reduce the time for the town administrator. <laughs> you know, so there's co there is a little bit of cost saving and there's greater um, transparency for the public because they'll have access to it as well. You just have it locked out for the editing part, but they can go in and play with numbers and do that, you know, different things that they might want to do. So that was my main question. I don't know where everybody's at with that stuff. We, we can do whatever level you want. The, the problem with the Excel Plus is somebody has to know how to do fields and sorts and all those other things that come with creating those graphics. We Excel pretty pretty easily. We can figure that out and train somebody on the Excel. But for long term annual maintenance, um, take some skills. And now, like I said, it's a staffing commitment from you, or it's finding an easier way to do it with sort of a self guided software system that does all the back stuff uh, for you. But that's a cost. Excel is an annual cost. cost. Yeah. Excel, Excel is an annual cost too because somebody has to sit and do it. Oh yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like what, I don't know if it's that's exactly a, that's more of an unknown cost. Yeah, you won't you won't be able to present good information with the bare bones Excel unless you have that Excel Plus person that can make right. it more graphic for the public. Right. So don't have to answer now, but if we're going to do a little bit more, if you're interested, kind of question, mm -hmm. we'll do a little more and bring you back some stuff. But I just want to give you that ballpark of with the staff cost, <laughs> with the software cost. Right. What do you want to see in the end? So no answer now, just, just but as we get into it, getting closer to the draft CPI, CIP time, yeah. Yeah. Um, we'll have to start thinking about that. <clears throat> and the last bullet point there was just to ask um, you to get the word out um, if it hasn't been sent out already that the town is taking on this this undertaking and uh, please cooperate with Stone Shore. Um, just, you know, we want to keep things moving along and- I saw that one email, I think you sent it to conservation or something. So okay. Carl yeah. and Ron are coming. Yeah. Welcome okay. them on your next agenda. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Something like that. She's reached out yeah. to us already. Cool. And yeah. uh, looks like we're probably going to meet with them the, the first uh, meeting in May. I guess okay. it happens to be May 1st. So. That might that would be our first board meeting that we get to, and then the others will be um, the following week, and I think wrap up the week of the 13th. If I got my dates right, Monday the 13th with the Public Works Board. Okay. Good. Uh, or, uh, oh, easy get, CIP. That's one. So, if you want to look at something real quick, I just ran easy. Just CIP. Okay. That's just one. You can get a thousand of them, but that was the one that I just. That's the $2,500 option. There's there's probably variables of that. Um, but just for, just so you can see that Great. option. You said something about the conservation commission. commission. And so that, that brings me to the mountain. We have trails, um, you know, be it Bass, be it Bumbo, whatever those are. Mm -hmm. But it is something within our... It's an asset. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's an asset. And that's going to come into play as well? Well, that depends on, on you. We'll, we'll learn from the conservation commission what they have there, and if if what the town owns is the land, 
but the maintenance, the creation and maintenance of those trails is the responsibility of somebody else. Yes, or um, like at the very town forest, um, the town owns the forest, obviously, but the uh, Millstone Trails Association has a, an agreement that they are to maintain the trails. And if they don't want to have a trail, then they just stop maintaining it and don't offer it anymore. Mm -hmm. So the town isn't expected to put the money in to um, maintain the trails or to construct new ones. Yeah. Similarly, you could say, oh yeah, yeah, we got a great trail network, but that, you know, that eight foot culvert that we all need to connect two big segments, that should be the town, and then you come up with your MOU, Capital Planet, as one example. A lot, yeah. of, a lot of trails would probably have a life like Carl's talking about with volunteers mostly, and then if they stop, the town stops. Or you, or you invest, and that's probably going to be mostly O and M. But you may have a large structure that we should know about if that's right. potentially going to be a town trail system of some sort. Right. You know, yeah, that's why one of the things we need to find out we what we wouldn't know necessarily. If they've got a, like a maintenance shed out there somewhere, and that should be something that gets yeah. on the list. Or on your insurance if it's big enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Before it gets flooded, doors. like John said, they didn't have the insurance for it. <laughs> little inventory needs there, you know, just little things. Yeah, it's a good place to start, right? Yeah, that's the <laughs> asset inventory is first. Well, great. So I'm we really excited. For the passive list to uh, right. submit every October. Yeah, that'll be a good place to start along with your audit stuff. Hey, last short question, please. Who owns the dam out here? Do you know that you were talking about it last night? I believe that's Montpelier. Dickie Dam? Yeah. Montpelier? Okay, thank you. <laughs> All good? No, good. Yeah. Thank we're you good. very much. Appreciate this. Good regular touch. Lots to think about. Tour. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> we'll be back around. Yes. Yep. Great information. Thank All right. you. Okay, thank you for your time. Yeah. <clears throat> well, thank you for coming. Um, let's see here. In our CS. Uh, engineering bid review with the possible award. Correct uh, <laughs> that from the agenda. We did not receive any bids. Thanks, guys. Yep, yep. Hmm. Uh, Town Hall asbestos inspection quote. So you'll see the document in your packet. Um, contacted asbestos inspections of Vermont. Uh, they're proposing a $1,035 fee uh, to do an assessment of the entire building. That money uh, can come out of the uh, town uh, the building maintenance fund? Yeah. They were and I wouldn't recommend going rolling on the floor in the town clerk's office, just saying. Why so? <laughs> Do I have to draw you a picture? No. Okay. Um, so is there any, you need any action on that? Uh, no, I will contact them tomorrow and get that set up. Yep. Mm -hmm. well, that's good. That is good. Well, actually, since there's money being spent, uh, uh, entertain a motion. I make the motion to move forward with the quote that we received of a proposed fee of $1,035 from Asbestos Inspections Vermont for the Town Hall Asbestos Inspection. Second. Any further discussion? No. Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, Payne Turnpike North Municipal Project Manager's contact contract proposal so two documents in your packet the first is the uh, steps we have to go through and this is why you know these projects take several years um, as part of this um, we have to designate a municipal project manager um, there are three options. We could uh, go straight for an RFP. We could work with the Regional Planning Commission or hire our own town employee to do it. 
or we could use the V-Trans at the ready process, uh, which is where they pre-select, uh, pre-screen engineers, and then you work from mm -hmm. that, uh, whittle down the list. Uh, we decided to go with the at the ready. Uh, we reviewed the six uh, entities that were on that list and set it on this Stantec out of South Burlington. Um, we have uh, reached out to them, sent them an RFP. They sent a response back. Um, with a uh, estimated fee of $62,845 uh, to perform this service through you know, com uh, construction, completion, and acceptance, uh, which is way at the bottom. Um, <clears throat> And this, you know, this is part of the costs that are covered through the Federal Highway uh, grant project. Uh, we do have to get our selection approved by VTrans. Um, so I'm just looking for uh, to move forward with that, sending this uh, proposal to VTrans for their acceptance. Motion. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I have a question. Just, I guess maybe it was answered. How did this? Was this ever on the FEMA list after the flood? No, because it's a federal highway road. FEMA will not touch it. Okay. It's a federal highway administration road, so it's going through that source of funding rather than FEMA. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, pain turnpike is owned by the federal government? No, it's... Well, federal, federal government really doesn't own any roads. Generally speaking, okay. dealing with the federal government, nothing is absolute. <laughs> but even the interstates are not owned by the federal government, they're owned by the states. They receive money mm -hmm. from the federal government to maintain them. Right. This is just another level of that type of road. Oh, really? It's, it's mm -hmm. funded through the federal government, in this case, through the state to the town. But we own it, but they own it. Correct. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's nice because they have the checkbook. Well, the, that part is nice. The, uh, what's not nice is that, you know, just like the wait. with the Route 12 bridge and, and the uh, Lover's Lane mm -hmm. bridge, we've got to go through this process. And we're just up here, right here. Oh, shit. <laughs> yes. But how so, did it miss the emergency repair? I'm sorry? But how did it miss being an emergency repair? The that was a flat out decision we made at the time that okay. so it was the decision made by the town the decision made by the select board at that time not to pursue the emergency repairs okay mm -hmm. thank you now it's, in hindsight did they come back to bite us I, yeah i think so well but i think i think the person it, sitting to your right would say that it had a direct impact on response to her family's fire. I mean, I hate to say that, but it was a direct impact to that. I heard my period was first on scene, but yeah, I, won't, were, I won't, couldn't, couldn't get enough water there. I won't go there. Yeah. Well, you also, had, you yeah. also, also had a tinker in the ditch, too, so yeah. I won't go there, but... <clears throat> okay, anything else on uh, Payne Turnpike North? There was something, I don't remember what it was now. On the project or on the drainage? The project. Okay. Oh, do we need to pick somebody? No. Nope. Oh, no. Okay. We already have. Oh, okay. Who's, who, so, who do we pick? That's standing. No, no, no. This, oh, I thought we were, oh, no, no. I'm thinking of something else. Sorry. My brain is fried. It's late. <laughs> I, I did also, I, mean, I, I had Tom review that proposal and I had somebody else 
all qualified in engineering to look at it, and they were all fine with it and the cost and everything. And uh, I found in dealing with them, I found them to be very uh, easy to work with. They were, you know, I actually gave them to today to have the uh, proposal to us and had it like last Wednesday. So I've always you don't heard see, good things about You them. don't see that too many with engineers that they get things in early. <clears throat> They're doing yeah. good work for us down in the village. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Okay. Um, the Conservation Commission Montpelier Area Mountain Bike Association Quarter Management Agreement. So this is just the yearly update. Uh, they've brought this before the board uh, in previous years. Um, and just looking for the yearly adoption of this. Now they do have some future expansion plans that they will be coming before us. In Berlin? In Berlin. Um, but probably won't be for another month or so, but this is just for this one um, stretch on the map doesn't show very well, but uh, uh, it's the same agreement as last year. So their expansion plans, they were shared at the April meeting? Or did, did they, they did have an April? They did have an April meeting. Um, uh, I don't, they may, uh, they, I think it was a concept. It, they don't have plans yet because I wanted to have them come, actually come tonight. She goes, we're not, we, we're not close to having anything concrete yet to, to bring before you. But is it, this, is, this tonight is just to renew this existing um, agreement for one more year. I make the motion to move forward with the corridor management agreement between the town of Berlin and Montpelier Area Mountain Bike Association to renew it for the one year period. And have tour sign. And have tour sign on behalf of the board. Your second? A second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Um, REMC yearly appointment. So uh, this is the Regional Emergency Management Committee, which is uh, the planning committee for um, emergency management and shelters. Um, it's made up of the towns, you know, the 23 towns and the uh, Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission territory. Uh, each town can have two representatives, um, emergency management director, and then one representative for emergency services. Um, currently, Bruce Richardson and Chief Pompran are our representatives and looking to reappoint them for another year. Motion on this? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Did you talk to both of them? Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, licenses, permits, vouchers, applications. I make the motion to approve payroll warrant 24-22 for payroll from March 24th to April 6, 2024 to be paid on April 10th, 2024 in the amount of $63,178.53 and payable warrant 24G23 with check number 23874 to 23895 in the amount of $28,315.85. I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, approval of minutes. Uh, you have two sets. First is the April 1st, 2024 select board meeting. Uh, this is the one where we started off with the site visit to Dodge Farm Road and continued with the public hearing uh, here at the town offices and other uh, business from there. Motion 
I make the motion to approve the minutes of Monday, April 1st, 2024, as presented. You have a second? I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Motion carries. And second yeah, is this. the April 4th, 2024. This was the special meeting for executive session. I also make the motion to approve the Thursday, April 4th, 2024 select board minutes for the executive session. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, round table four. I just want to say thank you um, to all of you for entertaining the Bridge 12 discussion tonight. Um, uh, on Route 12, I should say, and the Bridge 67 in Lover's Lane. I think that was good to bring that forward tonight and allow people to express their views and get a good understanding. Um, you know, I learned from it as well because I'd been thinking that uh, Bridge 67 was going to be done in 2026. So I think tonight we really learned that it's further out. Yeah, that's very disheartening. Mm -hmm. uh, it is. Because that's going to be close to 10 years then that that bridge has been closed for bridge, what we thought was a rather simple, mm -hmm. if not, I mean, it's neat, I'm not denying that, but simple fix was uh, now going to take 10 years. And I do believe some assistance with representatives in the state may help us in terms of an alternative. Even though we don't know that right now tonight at this juncture, I feel very confident and hopeful as the best words that I can choose that we may be able to do something from that avenue. Mm -hmm. and, and to add to that, I almost think that that bridge, there was some historical. A, oh, there is, there is. It's also owned by the state. Mm -hmm. There's um, articles uh, that talk about the 1915 Warren Pony Trust Bridge, and I don't know everything there is to know about that, but there is historical value for certain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I was told that the state was the owner of the bridge, and that's why the town hasn't been willing. I mean, we asked the we asked the state if. We fixed it, would they reimburse us? And of course, after they got done laughing, we decided not to uh, <laughs> fix it. And I'm looking forward to potentially extending that conversation and seeing what can be done um, to assist because the time period that it's been closed is significant, as you said, and uh, it's very important to many. And yeah. I'm glad that we're bringing it back and reviewing it, and I, I know they appreciate that too. Well, we had one of our town reps there at the, the pie breakfast at which you sat with. Mm -hmm. Did this come up? That did not come up at that time, no, not with that representative. But I do know that um, another representative is open to discussing, and so, like I said, I'm very hopeful that we can move forward in some regard just going to require extensive discussion and what do we need to do so no promises but good I feel what hopeful. temporary options do we have and i'm looking to the v-trans employees <laughs> well the, the the trouble i see i mean past and current the, the 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 bridge failed the deck failed but i i haven't been down to crawl underneath it but then again, I was the, when they were here to discuss it, they said that the, uh, it needed some uh, structural welding. Some of the supports under the deck had rusted. So, I mean, at the time I was thinking, well, you know, if it's just a hole in the deck, maybe you can just even put some iron plate over it and then just right. send, the, send the cars over it. But if there's uh, structural problems underneath, Probably not the wise thing to do. Right, and I don't know. I don't think they could put a Bailey Bridge there. I would. 
Well, we already not, know what a Bailey Bridge is. Right. But to, to, I mean, and to maintain mm -hmm. what's there. Yeah. And I took without a tremendous having, amount without having of, right. to reroute it or something, mm -hmm. you know. And I took a tremendous amount of pictures of the Lover's Lane Bridge just less than two weeks ago, and I have those with me if anyone wants to see them tonight. Anything else, Paul? No, thank you very Joe? much. Well, we, we had a tremendous pie breakfast last Saturday. Thank you to all who, who participated. There was a lot of people who came, stayed for the entertainment. You had entertainment. You had people coming out of the um, the audience, if you want to call it, going up and, and singing as well. And who was that? John Keller? Did you? Did he sing? I don't. He did. I remember nice. another gentleman singing, but I didn't remember John singing. But I might have been talking at the time. <laughs> But there was so. a tremendous amount of participation. It was very well attended and uh, tremendous enthusiasm. Yes. There was even dancing. Yes, there was. One of them was one of our state reps. Mm -hmm. We might use that to get some influence. No, just kidding. <laughs> Your character. Anything else, Joe? No. Good. Door? Um, the charter change has been released for introduction in the legislature. Probably happen tomorrow. I believe it's H885. So hopefully that'll move pretty quick. It can't go this year, though, right? It should be up. I believe everybody's, it can. Everybody's thinking it doesn't it have will. to do doesn't have to do the crossover thing. It, they and said it was. I'm saying exempt, but it wasn't such oh, okay. a crossover. Okay. Right. So. Good. At our pre-town meeting, they were very. Um, much in favor and of their belief that it could oh, good. go quickly. Good. I was just when I saw your note, I'm like, yeah, but how's that work? Okay, mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. Any else, Stuart? No. It's great Valid. news. And executive session? Yes. Your motion. This is going to be a two-parter. I <laughs> make sure the minutes reflect Brad's groaning. Yeah. <laughs> I move to find that premature general public knowledge would clearly place the select board at a substantial disadvantage regarding labor relations agreements with employees. I need a second. Second. I was all, just thinking. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Now I move to enter executive session to discuss labor relations agreement with employees under 1 VSA 31. 3A1B. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And we are now in the executive session. <laughs> <laughs>